the expenditure uh, for, for, for the year. We are just we are early in the year dealing with uh, the budget. So all I need uh, the entities to focus on is on the, 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 the impact uh, as a result of uh, the reduction uh, or increase of the budget. Just only the areas that are impacted upon uh, and what they are going to do um, uh, with with it, for 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 for, for the castle, uh, theirs is to anyway. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I thought I should just mention that so that we don't spend uh, too much time as if we are dealing with the budget for the first time. So it will be the castle. Yes, sir. Uh, and then uh, the and then Amsco. AMSCO will focus on the, the impact of the reduction. I think it's about 120, 120 million or so, right? Yes, and uh, and uh, the areas that they've uh, cut back on to affect their savings and, uh, and what they are doing about it uh, and the changes to their performance plans and the perf changes to the performance plans in so far as the cut is concerned, the 120 million run cut is concerned. Right, and then we we'll move to, to to the DOD. I think um, with the castle, we're we'll not we're not going to spend anything more than ten minutes. No, 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 no. With 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 Amsco, three minutes castle, ten minutes Amsco. All right, chair. Uh, luckily, chair, they they are they are already in the meeting. So I yeah, see right. Mr. Gilfillan from the castle. He can hear you. Uh, I see also the the, the Amsco uh, boardroom. Uh, they can also hear you, so they will proceed as per your instruction. Yeah, okay. All right, so, okay, colleagues, we, let, let me uh, uh, take the opportunity to start the meeting and welcome uh, uh, everyone. Um, the time now is uh, nine o'clock. Um, we are brought together by the uh, adjustments <clears throat> to the budget and and plans. So we'll only deal with the adjustments to the budget and plans I've indicated earlier on. It's not uh, the opportunity to rediscuss the budget. So we must avoid the temptation of rediscussing the budget. We still have uh, 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 another appointment with all the entities in about a month's time to look into their uh, first quarter budget performance. It's where we will then drill into the details of, 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 of the budget uh, for the year as part of our in-year monitor. Colleagues, I said I will uh, start with uh, the CCP. And uh, uh, Brian, let me check uh, how it's in terms of quorum. Yeah, this thing is saying connecting. I, I... Oh, Mr. Mucha, apologies. Morning, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, sir. In terms of the quorum, we do form the quorum. I was just trying to call Mr. Mucha because I could not locate him on the list. But, the, but as I was speaking to him, I could hear that he is in the meeting. Yes, uh, I heard his voice too. All right, so we do have the quorum. Yes, yes, uh, we do. Let's, let's uh, record the apologies. Uh, I'll start with the first two apologies, uh, uh, Brian. Uh, the minister uh, has uh, sent in her apologies. And uh, please record that. Um, the DM has also sent in uh, his apologies. Uh, please record that uh, there is a bereavement in, in his uh, family. I think uh, today they are laying uh, the sister uh, to rest. And um, we would wish to convey our uh, deepest uh, condolences uh, to the deputy minister and, uh, and, and the rest of the family members. Uh, thank you very much. And can can I just uh, check if there are any other apologies, Brian? 
Yes, Chair, we do have uh, two ad additional uh, apologies. The first being from Ngozi Tsebekulu, uh, who has indicated that he has another engagement uh, which is taking place at the moment. We also have an apology from the SECDEF. Okay, Thank so you. those are the Yes, Brian? Uh, that is all, Chair. Yes, I think let's also record the apologies, uh, 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 group apologies uh, from the colleagues of the NSOP. I understand the NSOP is running as we speak. They are in session. Yes, so, yes, sir. Yeah, they are in session, so they will not be able to, to attend this, this meeting. They have also sent in their apologies as well. All right, <clears throat> colleagues, having recorded the, the apologies, uh, I've already welcomed uh, all of you, and uh, I don't think this must be really a three-hour meeting. We can easily dispense off with all the items within the first hour of, of the meeting. We're not discussing the project. I want to mention that uh, once again. Uh, let me then welcome... Yes, please. Um, I'm, I'm actually a bit up, you know, disturbed by the um, apologies of the minister, the deputy minister, as well as the secretary of defence. Um, you know, this is quite an important, um, you know, adjustments that we are dealing with, and it has got probably huge impact on the on on the whole um, uh, uh, constitutional compliance of our national defence force. And to have neither of, not one of them in attendance at this meeting, um, it is really, 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 really disturbing. Um, I don't know if the chief of the of the SNDF is, is is present or who will represent them. But in terms of accountability to Parliament um, and 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 you know civil oversight, it's uh, I'm 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 really um, you know this is. Concerning maybe, as you said, there's a bereavement in the in the family of the deputy minister, but uh, really for all three of them not to attend this is, is quite extraordinary in my opinion. And I'm just wondering why not one of them are, are, is, 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 um, is present in the meeting. Uh, I'm going to add a high 20. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hello. Are you done, uh, Mr. Marin? Yes, sir. So I am. Okay. No, thanks. IT, can, can IT assist us and the mute people who are not on the on the platform? IT, who's our IT uh, person this this morning, uh, Brian? Uh, morning, Chair. Actually, Brian, Brian can our... do it from... Chair, Brian can actually yeah. do what He is the meeting manager. So, Brian, oh, if I you see. can just mute... Yeah, if you can mute people, not the people or the individuals not presenting or speaking, if you can mute them, please, from your side. Thank you so much, Brian. I didn't know you Thank have you, that sir. capacity. Please uh, ensure that you uh, attend to it so that um, I don't have to call a person to order. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, OK, I've, I've listened to you, um, uh, Mr. Marais. Uh, I'm looking at my note here. Well, I think the minister is a solution to the Brian, Brian, can you mute everybody except the chief, please? Uh, I'll do so. It's just that I'm, I'm also busy on the phone trying to call oh, some of the members that are not in the meeting. All right. So I think the, the minister is a situation beyond their control. I think she is not well. That's that's a message I heard, uh, that she's not well. Um, it's the SECDEF's apology that uh, was not said. Uh, can I get a sense uh, from uh, General Ramatswana, who's representing uh, the department, um, what happened to SECDEF? Um, thank you very much, um, Major General Ramantwana. We we have uh, the leader of the delegation is Dr. Gamede. 
She is currently at the defense headquarters. Uh, may I um, pass over to her to, to, to respond to the questions? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, General uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, Karmete. Um, thank you. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Um, the CEPDF, I'm representing the CEPDF. Um, he is a Kenyan and he is in. Can you hear me? Uh, General Matona, can you mute your, your phone, please? Your gadget. So, uh, General Ramatona. Yes, uh, I, I have muted it, Chair. Uh, my apologies. I've muted it. Thank you so much. Dr. Kamedi. Thank you, uh, Chair. I was saying the set um was intending to attend this meeting. However, he has been called to attend to some COVID-19 uh, matters. As the chair knows that he is the leader of, he's the one who's giving the DGs on, on all matters that concern COVID-19. So, thank you. All right, there's a meeting uh, running at the same time that he has to attend to. Yes. Uh, I mean, Martin, but uh, the volume is 100 percent, but still no sound. Sir? Thank you. Should I speak? Unless it's going to proceed. Brian, what's happening? Well, The person that seems to be incredibly disorganized, and uh, there's so many noises, and it seems like everybody's moving around on their chairs. So it it, it seems just like a, I cannot follow one person because everybody is speaking and moving. Yes, uh, Brian, can you mute everyone else except one who is on the on the platform? Yeah, yes, chair. But I I hear that even the sound uh, from the boardroom. I don't know whether it's the bottom of the DOT. Uh, it's not. It's not very clear. Hence, it's giving an echo itself. No. Uh, DOT. Uh, can I hear? Yeah. There is a guest one nine nine two zero seven four. Who has not uh, muted uh, his or her uh, mic? Uh, You've muted, muted him. Yes, Please, yes. Brian, can you just look at, on the side? You'll see who is um, uh, having his or her mic uh, not muted, especially those that also speak at the same time when the mic is not muted. Thanks. All right, I think the order has come back. Uh, let me quickly uh, invite the, the CCP uh, to take us through the issues. Uh, the CCP uh, is represented by its chair, uh, General uh, Jay Mbuli, and uh, the CEO, uh, Mr. Calvin uh, Gilfallen, and uh, the, the audit chair, the CFO, uh, and another board member. A uh, board member is Ms. Uh, Agenberg, and uh, the CFO, Mr. Ngeu, and the audit chair is Advocate uh, Mitchell. So I welcome the, 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 the board delegation uh, to the meeting and then uh, grant the chair to give us his uh, opening remarks and then uh, uh, the CFO will just will then take us through the, the presentation. Over to you, uh, General Limboli. All right. 
Só para um detalhe que eu tinha, na suíte, o município do Rio de Janeiro, o antigo Kepi, que vai... Brian, do you hear that noise? Okay, Mr. Kilfelen, uh, please come come and take the the stage, please. Uh, uh, I would, and it doesn't look like uh, he has logged in as yet. Over good to morning, you. Um, good morning, good uh, morning, Chairman Kaba. Uh, honorable members of the esteemed portfolio committee and the uh, board members and the entire Ministry of Defense and Military Veterans um, uh, family. Uh, I take this opportunity to uh, thank all in the family for um, sharing, but more in particular, uh, I express the view from the chairperson for the three million uh, COVID relief funding that you bestowed on the uh, CCB. It has really changed the mood from where we were on the 6th of May to here. Chairperson, I will exactly I'll take exactly two and a half minutes to go to our presentation. I will I will I will uh, not even put it up because I will consider it as red. And essentially, uh, Chairperson, the uh, retabled budget and annual performance plan that we will submit today to the minister would uh, in essence, reflect a original 8.9 million approved budget that will be scaled down to a 5.1 million budget. Accordingly, we will also uh, adjust and amend our rest of the year performance targets to reflect, uh, in some cases, a third, in some cases, 40% uh, of what we would have delivered uh, to you. But we will give you an update in our next engagement, uh, as, as you have said, uh, Chairperson. Um, what has in the meantime happened is that there is a gradual uh, return to the castle. The maintenance staff is on the castle, so the castle is in good shape. Uh, we also have limited what we have what we call non-commercial uh, non events at a military veterans memorial service there. We also entertain uh, a lot of uh, filming companies who, who uh, do not postpone their uh, engagements with us, but we just uh, we, we just come and see to see when, when we return to normality. Our 5.1 million trim down budget is based on a, a couple of a couple of assumptions, and one of those, what I would call a killer assumption, is that we would return to normality by the end of the year. So, in essence, uh, Chairperson, the three million relief funding, uh, thanks to the Department of Defence, will take us through to December. But we really, really pray and hope, because we are at the Castle of Good Hope, that by December we will be able to do uh, uh, business uh, more or less as usual. Because as you know that uh, during this time of the year, it's winter, we would normally have had not a lot of tourism activities, but by December, January, February and March, we will certainly make sure that we, uh, and we have the plans in place that we will submit today and also share with you to get to the point where um, we can return to some form of uh, stability and, and, and meet our budget targets. I don't know if all of the members are aware that, that we are a self-funding organization. So the three million that we get as relief funding was the first uh, physical transfer from the DOD to the, uh, to the CCP. Um, we also engaged the deputy minister and there's an ongoing uh, discussion to look at our low season so that we the 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 set the cash flow revenue flow interruptions that we have during the low season from may to august that, that is addressed in the the statue statue of the of the castle control board which in this current global discussions around race and class and of uh, of, of the division between the haves and the have nots and the way that the uh, COVID-19 has exposed the rifts between the, the people who have and the people who don't have, that the castle, I think, uh, 350 years, 354 years after this estimate, do play a very important 
role in developing that uh, national and global consciousness about how we should not go back to slavery, not go back to racism, to bigotry and all of that. So in, in, in summary, we, uh, Chairperson, I want to thank you and the entire portfolio committee for the support that you gave us. I think that uh, press release that you had on the, the next day after the 7th of May has certainly uh, opened the lights all over the place. And I think it is with a huge sigh of relief that, that the 19 staff members can now breathe again. Most of them are working off-site, but those who are on-site take the necessary precautions. Thank you very much. I think I will conclude with that, Chairperson, uh, and maybe ask the members to uh, raise particular questions if they have. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, CFO, for that uh, brief uh, uh, presentation. And uh, certainly, we we have to thank the Department of Defense uh, for uh, coming to to your rescue uh, th with the three million rand uh, lifeline that takes you right up to December. And uh, that is in the hope that uh, you know the situation would not last beyond that. Uh, the current situation uh, that we find uh, ourselves in as a country will not last uh, beyond that. And uh, yes. we, thank you so much. So we'll then interact with the budget, how you are spending the money, um, starting with your uh, first quarter uh, budget report uh, sometime. Uh, in August, September. Uh, thank you so much. Colleagues, do you, have, you. Uh, do you have questions directed to uh, the CCP? Yeah. All right. It doesn't look like there's any... Let me just look at my screen here. All right. It doesn't look like there's any question. Thank you very much, um, uh, uh, Mr. Griffin. Uh, I wish to indicate that you are free to leave at any time uh, you, you wish to. And the same goes to your delegation as well. Um, all right. Now, thank you very much. Thank you, much. Mr. Kaba, and enjoy the rec. Thank you. Thank you. And then let me then invite uh, the, the, the AMSCO uh, team uh, is led by its uh, CEO, Advocate Nibada. Uh, let me check who is part of the delegation. Um, AMSCO. I don't have the list with me right now, but I will invite uh, the, the, the CEO, who will then indicate uh, who is part of the delegation. If the chair is in the meeting, uh, I will grant him uh, the opportunity to uh, give us his few remarks. Over to you, Advocate. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, good morning, members of the committee, colleagues from DOD and Castle, Castle Control Board. Um, uh, chair, uh, joining me is, is our CFO, uh, uh, Mr. Mkwanazi, Group Executive Acquisition, uh, Professor Mkaza, uh, group Executive Research and Development, and uh, Advocate uh, Sinne, uh, who is our Group Executive Business Assurance, responsible for, for risk management as well. Uh, Chair, uh, you've given us 10 minutes. Um, we will spend, uh, in fact, I mean, we've shared the presentation. Uh, our presentation is in two parts. Uh, the first part relates to the financial impact to the organization. And the second part is uh, related to the impact of the budget cuts in, in broadly to the DOD projects. But uh, I will ask the, the, the CFO to focus on five key slides, Chair. Uh, slide that uh, is looking at the impact of the 120 million uh, budget cut. Um, and, and the ripple effect it has into our business in as far as the, the sales uh, forecast, as well as the deficit position. Uh, we'll also like him to also share the revised budget plan for, for, for the year and the three-year forecast and conclude with the mitigating uh, actions that as Expo we have, uh, we have, we have, we have taken uh, into account 
but as well as also to mention, Chair, that uh, this work, uh, unfortunately, is still had yet to be presented to the board, uh, starting with the Audit and Risk Committee next week, because we only received the final confirmation about a week, a week and a half. Uh, so, but now in the nutshell, that will be the first part of the presentation. Then Mr. Mkhanazi will zoom in. I would like him to just focus on the two slides that looks at the impact of the cuts to the projects, mainly the contracted projects as well as the planned projects. There's a lot, there's a slide with, with a list of projects uh, that relates to, for an example, the submarine upgrade and so forth. So if you can just talk to those two slides and essentially that would be our presentation chair. Uh, okay. uh, with your permission, I'll, I'll hand over to the CFO to just focus on those five main slides. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Mkwanazi. Uh, it will yes. be a CFO followed by Mr. Mkwanazi, Chair. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Chair. Members, um, just, I'm just going to reflect quickly the, the slides that the CEO discussed. I think for, for understanding the impact on arms corps, it's important to look at how the group is funded. I think the biggest portion of our funding is through the transfer payment. We also do commercial work from the facility side where we generate some revenue, finance income, and then other income as well, where we start with the new developments, the new ventures that we are trying to generate in, income from. So, so may, may, Sorry, Maino is talking. It's Gerard Kromler, the CFOs. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Over to you. Apologies sir. for not introducing myself. All right. Chair, that is the current budget. It's basically a break-even budget for the current year. So the impact of, of COVID, uh, the transfer payment, there we had a reduction of 120 million. That was 11% reduction on our transfer payment. In terms of our sales from facilities, we're going to have 86.9 million. That's the estimate. That's also depending on when the business can really start because some of those are subject to foreign contracts that needs to execute test facilities, so it all depends on that. Finance income, the other source, is also affected by the lower interest rates, and then the other income is also affected by areas such as the AAD that's not going to happen during the current year, which then affects the group. So the total impact of on arms call is what is currently estimated as 243 million for the group. If you look at acquisition, the acquisition function, the corporate function, the deficit is 140 million, Research and development is 92 million, and then the docker is the least affected with 8.8 .8 million deficit for the impact. So just at the net result, you'll find that when we were in a break, even from 0.7 million, we're standing on a deficit of 243.2 million. Corporate side on from 2.4 to a deficit of 140. Research and development from 1.9 deficit increased the deficit to 92. And then the dockyard also increased their deficit from a break-even position. So on the five-year view of the three-year view, I'm not going to spend time on that one. Looking at what, how we're going to consider actions to impact, to reduce the impact, if you look at our cost structure, the biggest cost portion is personnel-related cost. So if you look at the areas where we can really make an impact for the current year, is personnel cost as the main cost driver. So what we are proposing as management is no salary increase for 2020 for the current year. That still needs to be negotiated or con uh, consulted with the employees. We also say no performance remuneration will be paid next year for this year. We also say we have to look at other operating costs, which is a very low percentage of our total cost, where we must at least generate a 5% uh, saving on that. We will still look, be looking at voluntary severance packages, but that will also be a cost and only a benefit in future years. And then in the event that our transfer payment is further reduced for the five-year period, three-year period, it will result in retrenchments. So that is the current position. We're sitting with a net shortfall of 243 million. Even after the impact of the proposed uh, actions, we will still end up with a 137 million deficit, which will have to be fund funded through reserves. So just the impact for the three-year view, Current year changed from 0.7 to 243. And what we're also saying is we don't know what the future impact is going to have on future years on our transfer payment due to the economic outlook of the current country and the SDA reduction, which Mr. Mokonazi will also speak to. So 
just the impact on service delivery targets. What we're saying is our targets are affected by the acquisition and program execution as the suppliers are not uh, performing currently. Our strategic objectives will also be influenced, some of them like the renewal of application systems, uh, which will be delayed. Our capital renewal program on the main complex is also delayed. And then all our financial objectives will be negatively influenced for the current period. So those are the amendments that have also been made to the annual performance plan. I will then hand it over to Mr. Mukanazi. Thank you, Chair. Honorable members of the portfolio committee. My name is Sipo Mkwanazi, Group Executive Manager of, uh, of Acquisition and Supply Chain Management. Chair, I'll start straight into those slides that uh, I need to focus on. I'll just touch on this particular slide because uh, it is a slide that shows the reduction of the budget in terms of the capital uh, budget, which shows that uh, it has been, it, in the last five years, the budget was about uh, 5.5 billion rands. And then come the year 2018-2019, it dropped uh, to about uh, 2.6 billion rands. And then in the current financial year, it's about 2.8. And uh, come the next uh, financial year, 2021-22, it's going to be zero. And also, if one looks at even the operating budget, it shows that also it has been also reducing. Now, just to look at also now the effect of that in terms of uh, the projects that we have been handling, the graph shows that uh, we started around five years ago with about 63 projects, and that has now been reduced down to currently running about 15 projects. And come the year 2021, 22, we'll be having zero. Uh, the projects that will be running. That has an effect in terms of uh, uh, the, the amount of work that we were supposed to do, especially in the environment of the SNDF, where there was a plan to uh, arrest the decline of the capability in the SNDF. And uh, this slide shows the number of capabilities that were going to be acquired, and also some of those that are going to be uh, maintained and repaired to give it uh, a longer lifespan. For instance, if one look at the new uh, capability that was going to be acquired, one is looking at uh, uh, the placement of the uh, submarine uh, torpedoes, it's looking at the uh, electronic warfare system, and some of all those that are going to be acquired. But not only uh, uh, acquired, but also if you look at the, uh, the, the, the repair and maintenance capability also, that uh, we would have to uh, terminate as well, because due to the fact that reduction. Also, the other capability that is critical is the capability of uh, the chemical biological defense system that also will be terminated. And then critical also in terms of uh, the midlife upgrade of the submarine. That is a big project that also will have to be terminated. And also the upgrade of the frigates uh, to give it uh, another 15 to 20 years. That also will be uh, terminated. What it means is that now we're running these projects up to a point of uh, uh, reaching the functional baseline, which is a baseline of completing just the defining uh, the, the, the work that is required. Just before we go to the, uh, to the industry, to contract the industry, we'll then terminate the projects due to the reduction in, uh, in, a, in a DOT budget. The effect of all the, 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 the reduction chain in terms of uh, the projects that I, uh, we have already contracted, like I indicated on the previous slide, that on those list of 15 projects, we have not contracted them. We just got them before contracted. However, we've got those that are already been contracted, which will be affected by the fact that in terms of the allocation on our strategic capital acquisition master plan, it shows that there is no allocation on the, uh, of uh, any capital budget for 2021. It's zero, as I showed on the previous slide. And that is going to affect the significant, the significant projects, which is a project uh, which is there, the infantry vehicle, and the project hotel, which is the hydrographic uh, vessel, as well as the project bio, which is the IPVs. In the fact that uh, already we are contracted, and if we don't have funding, 
Armstrong could be taken uh, for an indication in terms of uh, the, the commitment uh, due to the fact that one we have the, the, the fund to pay the milestone that we have been at that point in time. That is now reflected as a huge risk for us. Going to the industry implication in terms of the reduction of the budget, which, like I indicated, that with, with, with the, the, the POT budget started around uh, 2018. Uh, there is going to be a general loss of capability in the industry as a result of the reduced budget. And also in terms of the, the, the work that the industry will be getting, they won't be getting sufficient work to sustain themselves. So they'll be faced with a situation of focusing on the exports uh, with all the difficulties that uh, are there in the international market, such as, uh, you know, the, the stiff competition, uh, issues such as uh, the time scales that are, are very stringent. But also there's going to be a loss of capability, especially in the area of uh, strategic uh, capability uh, and the sovereign capability, which is housed in the NEL. Uh, very critical capabilities such as the missile capability, the artillery capability, and all these other capabilities such as the one of uh, maintaining our aircraft, I think the arrow structures of the, of the arrow systems of the uh, road. So if the situation goes the way it's going, we are running a risk of losing those capabilities. There's also going to be, a, uh, as a result, a reduction of, of uh, uh, the budget uh, in terms of the R&D, because even the R&D budget has been reduced. That is going to impact the industry in terms of not having that competitive edge that they have been having in terms of uh, the new technology that they were in a position even to export. But now that we're not going to be doing uh, R&D, so they will, they will lose that uh, competitive edge. Now, also looking at the situation uh, subsequent to the COVID-19, which has exacerbated the world very precarious uh, position of the, the sector industry due to the lockdown, things like the, the, the deliveries, and also even in terms of the fact that uh, a lot of projects that they are contracted on, they are going to now to move to the right they will be experiencing a lot of problems, such as uh, the escalation, the exchange rates, and all that. So uh, the situation of the COVID-19 has worsened the very picture that I was painting previously. Now, looking also at the impact of the DOD budget reduction, uh, just in terms of uh, the, 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 the industry in general, I've just indicated that there's going to be loss of the capability, but also there's going to be loss of skills. Uh, and the capacity in the defense industry. There's going to be also the loss of jobs. There's going to be a loss of all the strategic capabilities that I've touched on earlier, especially for the SNDF, which requires such capabilities. Uh, also, there's going to be that reduction of the competitive edge of our local industry for them to be able to export and augment the kind of wealth that they're not getting from the, the South African industry. There's also going to be a, 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 a reduction uh, due to, uh, there's going to be an impact due to the obsolescence technology uh, because of uh, the fact that, as I indicated earlier on, that some of the midlife upgrade of the system is not, it's going to be terminated, meaning that we're not going to be doing it. So we'll be experiencing a lot of uh, obsolescence in our systems. There's going to be even an ability to properly maintain the critical systems, such as the aircrafts, the vehicles, as well as the, 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 the vessels. And also there's going to be a loss of techni uh, technological uh, competitive edge. And especially if one looks at some of the technology that uh, our SNDF has been using uh, as a force multiplier, such as the sensors, the UAVs, and all such technologies in terms of having a competitive edge, that is going to be lost. Chair, yeah, uh, that completes my presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, um, may I invite uh, um, uh, colleagues? Uh, are there any comments on the presentation by AMSCO? Good morning, sir. Yes, um, from sure. from my side, Kubus yes. Mare. Yes, Mara, you may uh, comment. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, what a what a what a bleak picture, um, and a, and a really concerning picture um, that we are getting, which 
which is which is which is the reality of COVID, but but very very concerning. First of all, I want to start off. Thank, thanks for the presentation by everybody. It's much much appreciated under the circumstances. I am I am very pleased, and one must give acknowledgement to uh, Arms Corps for the um, initiative by by you know forfeiting um, salary increases and performance bonuses. Uh, and, and things like that, and, and then further cuts in operational costs. That is, that is a good initiative, and we must compliment them for that. And, and hopefully that will get um, approved that it can be implemented, because that will assist a hell of a long way. Then further on, um, the, the rest is very, very concerning, and I've got a couple of questions with regards to that. Um, obviously, in terms of the submarines and the frigates upgrades, because that will impact on our um, constitutional um, compliance in, in incredible uh, and we will have to take this further uh, chairperson than just uh, speaking to arms corps but to um, dod and obviously national treasury as well because that impacts directly on our constitutional um, obligations and if one looks specifically at um, current projects is very, very important. I think that's even more important than the submarine upgrades. Uh, that's fantastic um, vessels, but it, 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 it's, it lies, uh, you know, um, um, basically there and we cannot use it. Then on our projects, hotel and biro specifically, um, those are current projects that we have got obligations on uh, and that we need is of strategic importance. So if we are now sadly not being able to complete uh, projects, hotel and biro, and we know that those projects are quite far down the line. Um, and 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 obviously, I want to ask whether there's been communications with uh, with those two uh, service providers who are building those those vessels, uh, and what the reaction is, whether there are and will be um, uh, penalty payments, uh, because normally in contracts like that, there will be penalty payments. And we will have to basically take that into consideration when there are no funding further provided, because I suspect that we will have penalty payments uh, on those projects. Then on um, whether we know the impact on the NEL, because we know that the last uh, presentations that we've had from the NEL, uh, to a large extent, they, they depend on the acquisitions by Arms Corps on behalf of the SNDF. So it will have, obviously, a, I suspect it will have a major impact on the NEL. And then also um, the, the, um, the, 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 the obviously continuous uh, ability of the SNDF uh, to, to, to fulfill their task. Because if suddenly our aircraft, our Oryx, our Ray Falk, our uh, C-130, the only one that we've got in the air, uh, the vehicles, if those things are impacted in such a way that Arms Corps uh, must stop those projects and there are zero being, being spent on capital, it means that our ability to respond to any threats from outside, and we have seen shortly, you know, uh, uh, lately the, the, the threat from, from ISIS as well, so, so we've got a, a major problem facing us uh, going forward and, uh, and, and we need to know, you know the impact of those things as well. And, uh, and obviously then lastly, to what extent does this really impact on the uh, sustainability and the survival of, of Arms Corps itself? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, any other comments? Uh, Chairperson Mafanya here. Yes, Mr. Mafanya, sir. Uh, thank you very much um, for the presentation on both entities. The the only question that I have is uh, there is a termination of almost 15 projects, including Project Hub, in, uh, with additional three on the three projects: Project Hotel, Bayero, Fusa. Now. The sense that I have is that there's already money that has been spent on those projects. And then I want to find out the, the, the quantum, the, the amounts spent already on the projects that are to be terminated. Thank you very much, Chair. 
thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mafanya. Uh, any other uh, okay, comment? Okay, Chairperson. Uh, Mr. Make, over to you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just, just one, one, one point. Uh, I heard this CFO, now the CEO talk about reserves. Financial reserves. Uh, can I get a clarity uh, about that, those reserves and how much they have there? And what advantage does the reserves give them? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, chair. Yes, chair. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Yeah, thank, Over to you. thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to find out because uh, the presentation uh, uh, precisely talks to the impact or the budget cuts that uh, AMSCO is experiencing. Uh, as opposed to CCB, they have received something in terms of uh, uh, in a form of a relief. I just want to check if they've made a submission as well to DOD for them to get a relief so that they balance uh, some of the, 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 the projects that uh, might be severely impacted, particularly those that are, are running uh, your office there, uh, hotel and bio. Out of uh, out of that uh, allocation that has been given to 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 DOD, have they made the submission? And what are what is the the, the status quo? And uh, I've even seen them reporting on anything that uh, uh, any role that they are playing with regard to uh, acquisition on behalf of uh, the DOD with regard to 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 COVID nineteen. Uh, uh, acquisition that uh, the DOD might undertake uh, for the current uh, out of that current allocation given to 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 the DOD, I would like them to to bring us on par. And what does the status quo if they are playing uh, if they don't have any role, uh, so that we know. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, All right, it, that completes uh, the. The comments from the side of the committee. May I now uh, invite the group executive uh, to um, respond? Advocate Bada. Advocate Bada. Thank you. Um, um, I, I will um, perhaps be, maybe just for the members to you know to clarify is, is that what we are highlighting in as far as projects that were indicated that we are likely to terminate at this stage that's the risk we are foreseeing in as far as if there is no uh, funding coming our way those projects are at risk but to to say Definitely now we'll terminate. We're not yet there. Same goes with the three contracted uh, contracted projects, uh, buyer who face there and hotel. We have highlighted the risks that are associated if funding is not coming our way in outer years, uh, chair, uh, because of the SDA outlook. So we have uh, uh, presented and made uh, this visible to, to the client. And from our side, we are recording as 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 a as a potential risk that we might later uh, realize. So at this stage, we it's fair to say, Chair, we still are hopeful that uh, between the DOD and the National Treasury, they will allocate uh, the necessary resources. Uh, in as far as the the contracted, uh, I know there are engagements for that matter. In as far as the three projects are concerned. And of course, other you know projects that are critical and crucial towards the maintenance of the capability from the client environment, you know, in light of various threats that we are all are familiar with. So, so we we still remain optimistic 
but it will also be, you know, irresponsible of us not to highlight and raise these issues because we might very soon uh, realize them. So I think that's that's the first uh, point. Uh, in as far as Denel, Denel as it stands, the 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 high number of projects from the Air Force environment. Uh, uh, the, as well as the landlords environment that we have already, you know, uh, 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 contracted them uh, to go to a tune of. I mean, if you look at uh, the the total uh, share of the pie, uh, Danel accounts for for 40 44 percent of our work and our budget goes towards them. But the the issue with Danel has been the the, the non performance uh, against the, the the necessary milestones. Um, but uh, Mr. Mkwanazi will then uh, uh, give, uh, there's a question that was raised uh, regarding how much have we spent on Tenel. I mean, we, we all know by now that for, 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 for the Ufa Easter project, already we have spent about 7.2 billion uh, that has been paid to, to, towards Tenel uh, for phase one and, phase, and part of phase two. So, 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 so that's, that's the amount just on one project. And Mr. Mkwanazi can give a sense. I mean, if you take the total uh, budget, so you you then say 44% goes towards uh, is committed to Daniel. But of course, they will then have to 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 to, to request payments as and when they perform. Uh, with regards to the sustainability of of AMSCO chair, to the extent that we are funded through a transfer payment, uh, as long as that transfer payment will continue to reduce. Uh, and and we don't have uh, the ability to generate revenue that will will, will obviously put AMSCO at risk um, and 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 if that uh, decline is, uh, is 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 quite severe uh, for the years to come then you know it will it will go without say that AMSCO will have to reposition itself uh, in light in line with the amount of money they have and 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 so I think they they will be ongoing, so to speak, uh, 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 right sizing, uh, restructuring initiatives. Uh, uh, but again, it will be an unfortunate situation if we were to, to to go that route, because of the immense capabilities that have been developed over years. Um, like uh, chair, I think uh, we, despite all these other you know uh, uh, decisions around budget cuts. We always looking at ways of making sure that we we are prudent, we are fit for purpose, we are you know running the business in an efficient way. And hence, over the years, you will see we have continuously tried to make sure that we contain the costs. And hence, I mean, even this big cut, we were able to to cushion it, uh, partly because of all the savings that we've been uh, making over the years. But there will come a point where I think we'll have to take a drastic measures. But it will, as, I, as I'm saying, it will be a very, you know, an unfortunate uh, event because of all the capabilities that uh, AMSCO, you know, is uh, responsible for uh, on behalf of the Department of, of, of Defense. Um, the reserves, I think Chair, um, uh, CFO will touch, will touch on that. Suffice to say, some of those reserves are really, you know, uh, 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 amounts of money that uh, are, are put aside for other, uh, you know, unforeseen eventualities, including even where, when we have to, uh, supposedly we have to retrench, some of those severance packages will be coming, a part of that money will be coming from the reserves. So there are some statutory provisions that we're making to say, you know, as, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as a responsible organization, we need to make sure that we don't run in a, in a situation where we go total liquidation. So I think the reserves tend to 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 to, to be for such purposes. But uh, the amounts involved and how we accumulate these reserves, I'll ask the CFO to to share with the committee. And in a, the last uh, question, Chair, uh, our role uh, with the uh, COVID acquisition for the Department of Defense, Chair, we 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 continue to to be involved in in, in discussions. With the client environment, where you know some of the equipment that needs to be purchased is 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 quite you know a, a, a very sort of a, a complex systems that they will need to to acquire, and there are indications from the client that, um, in, I mean, within a, a matter of a few weeks, 
or a week, uh, they will be coming back to us uh, to for assistance. But as of now, we don't have any requirements officially that we have uh, coming from the, the, the client environment. But um, we hope to have engagements uh, early next week again to see where can we play a role in, ass in assisting the Department of Defense. And, and particularly considering the role that uh, the, 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 the department is, I mean, uh, is, is playing um, and, and all these deployments that are, that are taking place and uh, around the country uh, where, I mean, the role of the department, uh, in fact, of the SNDF is much more pronounced now and uh, there's, there's heavy reliance. Um, and, and so we, we, we believe that uh, we, we, we will have to, to come in and assist and we remain available. Uh, Chair, I'll hand over to the, CF, to the CFO and, and to Mr. Mkwanaz just on those two, two issues around the, the funding uh, towards the NL and whether we have we com did we communicate the position that we're finding ourselves. At this stage, uh, in as far as uh, Biro, Hotel and Office there, we, we haven't gone back to those uh, uh, suppliers to say there is this risk. But I suppose, uh, you know, they, they're quite aware of the, the, the decline in the SDA. But as, as, as of now, there's nothing official, so we are not in a position to communicate. But uh, should that come with the reality chair, we will have to run this situation and see how best we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Popla. Thank you, Chair. If I can just respond on the reserves. The reserves, of course, are shared to a public entity. To that extent, we can retain our, our surplus at the end of the year that we haven't spent. So for us, it's not a uh, the purpose to spend everything that we receive. So we try to save for future years as well. So we have uh, approximately 800 million in reserves, but those are earmarked also for, for building maintenance and then for some of the expenditures that we have in terms of uh, provision for leave and those type of expenditure. And then there's also some funding for the medical reserve for the dockyard. So those that cash is basically allocated to some extent. I think there's approximately 300 million that is uh, just there for our liquidity purposes, which will now be depleted or to a large extent depleted by the loss we're going to realize in, in this current year. So that is the situation of the reserves. The, the benefit we're getting from that is we invest that and we then supplement our shortfall from the transfer payment through the interest that we earn from those investments. So that is the, the case in terms of the reserves. We also used the reserves a few years back. I think there was three years where Treasury uh, reduced our, our cash reserves with 40%, where we were requested to fund ourselves to that extent to retain the same level of activity, but to use our own cash for funding ourselves. So that was also then used in that, for that purpose. So that is the situation with the one with the with the cash reserves. Thank you, Mr. Mkwanazi. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I'll just touch on the the 15 projects that we, that we spoke about. Yes, those projects we have not contracted them, so we're still working uh, with those projects, all 15 of them internally. So there's not money that has been spent in terms of uh, contracting the industry. Looking at the, the other three projects, which is the project roof Easter, project hotel, project Pyro, with those, they are already been contracted. In fact, they are running with the industries. One, if looks at, uh, for instance, uh, roof Easter already, we have spent about 7.2 billion rands on that particular one. The hotel, we are close to about a billion rands, as well as Pyro. It's about uh, close to a billion rands that we have spent already on those particular, uh, 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 each. Yes, on, on the on the on the on the on the two projects, Pyro and Hotel. Now talking to the issue of the situation and the impact of the NEL. Uh, currently, with the NEL, we've got about 4.3 billion rent orders, which is about 42 uh, percent of our order book, meaning that uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge order. So uh, all these impact that we're talking about, they will negatively affect the NEL. And if one looks at the situation of Denel in terms of uh, the local uh, projects that are having uh, in the different divisions, for instance, if one looks at uh, the dynamics, mainly there, the, 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 
manufacturing and developing the, the missiles. They've got uh, the major project there, it's our project, which is a project uh, uh, data, which is the air to air missiles. And then also, even if you look at the, the area of uh, the, the UAVs, in, in that environment also, the CICA 400, it's our project, that's a pro main project that are busy with. So if anything happens to those projects, they will negatively be affected. And then even if one looks at uh, the, the landlords division of Canal, there are major project, there is a Wolf Easel project, which has got uh, also uh, other you know, spin-offs in terms of uh, the work that they are doing uh, internationally, which is the turret uh, that they are manufacturing and developing for the, for the Malaysian market. So if anything happens to that project, it's going to affect the NEL uh, uh, in, in, a, in a very negative way. Even if one looks at uh, the other division of the NEL, which is the aero systems, where we do our maintenance of uh, and then support of our aircrafts, there we've got the Royfalk, we've got the Oryx, we've got the C-130s. So if anything happens, that will negatively affect the NEL in terms of, uh, of, uh, of the budget reduction, as well as also the capability to the uh, SNDF. So if one looks at uh, the, just that impact to the NEL, it also has that rippling effect to the rest of the industry because the NEL is the integrator, meaning that it's operating at, a, at a, the, the highest systems level. And a lot of companies are dependent on the NEL as subcontractors to the NEL on these particular projects that have touched on. And I thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you so much, colleagues. Uh, I'm not too sure if uh, this discussion uh, um, on on your uh, role in COVID COVID nineteen related activities has been answered. I think Mr. Mutia wanted to know whether uh, you you have been asked uh, to undertake any COVID nineteen related uh, activity by the department on behalf of the Department of, uh, of Defense. That was not fully, fully responded to. Uh, and, and, and that, and, uh, Kubus Marie, just, yes. just the, the, the question of mine on the potential penalties on those contracts, if, if we cannot, um, because eventually we will have to offset the penalties against, you know, our inability to pay. So, so, so um, uh, that that's quite important for for us to consider as well. All right. Okay. So those are the que two questions that uh, remain outstanding. Uh, advocate, over to you, Group uh, CEO. Um, thanks, thanks, Chair. I'll, I'll ask uh, Mr. Mkwanas to take both questions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. In, in terms of uh, the, the, I'll start with the penalties. Uh, Hans was saying that the risk is high in terms of uh, those those projects because those are significant projects. Uh, if one looks at uh, the, the, the Wolf Easter one, what we are saying that uh, we have paid about 7.2 billion rands. What is outstanding uh, is uh, roughly another close to about 8 billion rands because the project is sitting at about uh, 16 billion rands. So companies will tend to uh, penalize us on uh, uh, the amount of work that they would have done at that point in time. So it will go into billions of friends because remember they've already ordered some of the some of the parts uh, in planning to make, to to to, uh, to, uh, uh, to to manufacture those particular ones. So they will really sue us uh, to the to the billions of friends. Uh, even both uh, with uh, with uh, the hotel and the pyro. The last time I, I, I went to check the project of, uh, of uh, the hotel, they are, they are about to complete the hull of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the vessel. And it's a, big, it's a big vessel. So the amount of steel that has gone in there, it's, it's quite a lot of, of, of money. And still what is outstanding in terms of the, the systems that will be put on that hull, it's a lot of, of, of work that they have already started contracting the, 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 the subcontractors in terms of procuring those subsystems that are required. So on that one, again, one will be looking at, uh, the, at the close to about a, a billion and one billion and a half in terms of what they will be seeing as well. Similarly with the, the, with the, with the bio. Now, going to the other question of uh, in terms of um, 
any, requ- any, any role that we'll be playing on that, on, on COVID. So far in terms of uh, uh, COVID, what we have been requested uh, by the DOD, it was the, re- the requirements that had to do with uh, supporting the, 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 uh, our, 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 our soldiers in terms of uh, the uniforms, in terms of the spares for the vehicle, in terms of uh, the, the, the batteries and other things that they required agently that we needed to acquire those. So it was mainly in the, in the environment of supporting the, the, the army in terms of the equipment that they were get, that they required. We have also been uh, 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 requested also in terms of uh, looking at uh, the, the PPEs. So th- that's another area where they've just indicated to us that we must look at uh, the quotations for them. So as soon as they give us the requirements, we hope then we'll also assist them in that uh, uh, environment as well. Thank you. Uh, colleagues, I want to assume that um, they've uh, answered all the, the, the questions. I'm sure it's safe for us to move forward. But there's just one uh, question I want to pose. It, in view of uh, the fact that we, we, there are projects um, underway, projects with DNL that uh, are supposed to be underway and, um, and there's no money, uh, uh, to take them to completion. Um, at some point, it was reported that we 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 advanced uh, Dinel. There was an advanced payment against which the the the, the there has been no uh, performance uh, reported. What is the status of that advanced uh, payment? How much is it? And uh, uh, what, uh, what what are the intentions uh, uh, going forward in view of the situation, financial situation you find yourself in? Chair. Yes, Mr. Mutle. Chair. Uh, maybe lastly, uh, if they can all, also, they have not responded to one of my questions, which says uh, uh, under their analysis, if they have made one, uh, with regard to the impact of COVID-19 on their financial obligation, have they made a submission for a relief fund for them? Not the second one uh, has been answered in terms of the role that they are playing, but them as an entity, AMSCO, uh, what impact has COVID-19 uh, uh, or or what? the impact that uh, COVID-19 has imposed on them and to what an extent have they made a, a submission for a request for a relief as an entity? I think that question was not answered. Yes, all right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mutle. Um, who's going to take that question, uh, Advocate uh, Mbata? All right, Chair. Chair, we, 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 have, we haven't made any, any application uh, uh, as of now, as I've indicated, that the the final confirmation came in just more than a week uh, regarding this uh, 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 budget cut. But it's it's something that I think we need to look into. Uh, we will do our assessment, and then we'll make a determination. And I suppose it's an issue that we'll also uh, discuss with our with our board. All right. Uh, on the advanced uh, payment uh, to Dinel, how much was it, and uh, what is the status of it currently? I, I, I will ask the CFO to uh, or Mr. Mkonas to give a breakdown. But all I can say, Chair, the the there was security uh, in the form of a bank guarantees that actually you know protects or secures us from the advanced payment, which Dinel obviously is servicing uh, with the banks. Um, and it's got an expiry date. So, so if that expiry date before it, are, it, it comes and Danel is not in a position to get an extension, or the expectation is that Danel must always make sure that uh, they, they, they do apply to the banks for that uh, bank guarantee to be extended. Failing which chair, if they are not in a position to do that, what it means is that we can then go to the banks and demand pay that uh, and, and, and cash in that uh, bank guarantee. And uh, obviously the banks will then pursue Daniel. But I'll ask uh, CFO to just give us a, a breakdown uh, as to exactly 
how much is secured by the banks, how much is secured by what they call corporate guarantees, and what's at risk. Thank you. Uh, please, Mr. Mkwanezi, just talk to it. And uh, you see, I think, uh, I mean, the group CEO's uh, response makes me even more worried, given the situation of Dinel uh, currently. There are threats to foreclose uh, Dinel. Now, with uh, them uh, having access to this security that um, uh, the group CEO is talking about, I think it will make um, uh, uh, AMSCO even more vulnerable. And uh, because it means it's, it's money that uh, the, is, is, uh, is a facility that they have access to that whenever they uh, you know, uh, find themselves in trouble, they may access it and, uh, and, and causing uh, AMSCO to lose uh, in, in, in the process. But you may shed more light on, on this one. Thanks. Can respond. The, the total of the advance payment that's made contractually is in the region of 1.9 billion currently. In terms of that, it's about 400 million that's secured through a corporate guarantee, which is at risk. The rest are secured through bank guarantees as well as insurance guarantees. So, Danel, and there's also a small amount in an escrow account that's under our control of, of about 156 million. So, that's the 156 million is the only amount that's still available, which Danel did not already use for funding the business purposes and funding the project. So that amount is the only amount that's still lying in the account and which are being released as soon as they deliver items. So in the event, we can only recall the, the guarantees once the program is cancelled, then we can go to the bank and say, but please refund our money. So as soon as there is a final decision on the program, we can then start to collect the, the guarantees or the money from the different banks and we will be at risk for the, for the approximately 400 million that's under the NEL corporate guarantee where we will have a claim against the entity itself. So that is the situation with the guarantees. Just, just to, to also speak about the relief fund for, for to add what the CO said in terms of relief fund for projects. Although OMSCO places contracts in our own name, the money for the projects never comes to OMSCO. So we pay directly from the DOD's account. So the shortfall is lying in the DOD's account. So they will not give us a, they will not allocate funding to AMSCO for, for the shortfall of the projects because the shortfall is actually in their own account. So, but we sit with the risk that we've contracted in our own name and in the event they default, I mean, the first claim is going to be against AMSCO and that's what the risk we're trying to highlight. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you so much. Um, all right, so that takes us to, to the end of uh, this uh, uh, engagement with uh, AMSCO. Uh, colleagues, I'm sure you don't have a pending question. Uh, I can close uh, the discussion on, on, on AMSCO uh, budget. All right. No, th thank you very much, uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, Advocate Ambata, thank you very much. Thank you very much to uh, Team uh, for, for their presentation. And we'll meet again um, sometime when we do the in-year monitoring of the budget. Uh, good luck. We know the challenges that you are facing. You are not the only uh, government entity that is finding itself, itself in, in this uh, situation. Uh, the challenges have been dictated to us by the situation that um, we all live under, and uh, the private sector is also uh, in the in a similar situation, if not worse, uh, worse situation. Uh, at least you can still get some, you know, uh, lifeline support from uh, you know government. They are on their own. Uh, if there is no, uh, they go under. All right. No, thank you very much. Uh, good luck with the uh, progress uh, we're making. You are doing a good job, I uh, must say that. All right. Um, having said that, uh, colleagues, uh, advocate and the team, you are free to leave at any time you, you wish so. Uh, can I then quickly move to the Department of Defense um, uh, or the Department of Military Veterans, whoever is ready to come in first? 
Um, which presentation uh, we can fly uh, first? That is uh, right on the system. The OD, I saw your presentation on the system. Uh, at the, not the meeting. All right, there it is. <clears throat> I was told that the general. Yes. Uh, good uh, morning again, uh, Chair and members of um, the PCD. Um, it, it's Dr. Kamele here speaking, I'm the Chief of Defense Policy Strategy and Planning, and I'm leading the delegation on behalf of the ZGAP. Um, with me is um, Ms. Chibilika, who is the Chief Director of Budget. And management who's going to make a presentation. We also have uh, General Ramanswane, uh, as well as uh, General Harrison, and they will be with us remotely. General, General Harrison is Deputy CILO uh, and is responsible for uh, procurement of all uh, matters relating to uh, COVID-19. Chair, um, We'll go straight to the point. We, we um, requested 4.5 from Dr. National. Dr. Kamede? Yes. The, the CFO is not a uh, part of your delegation. The chief, the CFO is represented chair by um, Ms. Chibilika, who's chief director budget. And I also have uh, Mr. Abuzi, who is responsible for uh, financial services, but the CFO is not well said. I'm not happy with the way you composed your delegation um, because people who have a direct accountability in terms of the PFMA are not in this meeting. But uh, you may go ahead. There's nothing you can do with it at this point in time. But next time, um, when they send you without the people who have a direct accountability, as per the CFO, you must tell them that the portfolio committee is not going to take that lightly. Um, will you please convey that to the secretary for, for defense? I will do so, Chair. Thank you. And um, Chair, um, as I've already indicated, we have uh, requested a budget of 4.5. We've received a 3 billion allocation from national treasury as they I must also indicate that we have now updated our plans uh, to include COVID-19 uh, matters uh, we have also updated our priorities um, and we have included a performance indicator that will say, speak directly to uh, a, a, our performance on COVID-19 the combating of COVID-19, and we will be um, taking today chair the revised uh, plans. And then I will then give uh, Ms. Chibilika, um, with your permission, a, a chance to uh, make a presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chibilika. Good morning, members of the committee and colleagues. Um, as Dr. Kamete has already mentioned, um, as defense, we requested an estimate of four and a half billion to national treasury to cover up for COVID-19 uh, as part of OPNOTLELA. Um, in the meantime, while we were waiting for the four and a half billion, we were also requested by national treasury to reprioritize from within our allocation. And the amount that defense came up with is 1.1 billion. Um, subsequent to that, on the 24th of June, we then received an allocation of 3 billion and no reduction in our allocation, so which took our allocation to plus 3 billion. And the 3 billion was made up of um, 763 million for compensation of employees 
employees that increased our ceiling to 31.9 billion. However, the, the Department of Defense still has a, a shortfall that uh, we have of 3 billion that we've been having for the last few years and the next couple of years to come until the, the COE is sorted out. Of the 3 billion, 2.2 billion was also made up for goods and services, and 1.1 billion for goods and services, 1.2 billion for machinery and equipment. The, in the original requirement of 4.5 billion, 3.6 was allocated, was required for goods and services. So as we stand now, the shortfall for goods and services is 1.5 billion. AMSCO has already done a presentation and the, theirs was just a reduction of 120 million from the, from the transfer from DOD. And I also want to just say the 3 million amount that was allocated and transferred to the Castle Control Board was also from our allocation as well. Next slide. Next slide, uh, Mr. Apozzi. This is the breakdown of what the four and a half billion was made up of. It was uh, split according to the requirements per service and division. Um, all of us are currently, we're currently busy trying to spend the amount. Next slide. Next slide. The budget, this is just an, an indication of how this budget was allocated per our economic classification, the 4.5 billion and the 3 billion that has been allocated. And also in this slide, in the, in the third column, we're indicating the amount that has already been um, uh, ordered or financial authorities have been created, 1.327 um, billion. I must also indicate that um, this uh, 1.327 billion was an amount that was spent as at the end of the previous week. Um, I am aware that there are orders that have already been placed but we just do not have the, the current amount yet. I think log division can assist us with that amount that they have placed order. Next slide. This is also the same um, expenditure that we are just presenting in a different manner according to uh, economic classification for goods and services. We have financial authorities of about 732 million, machinery and equipment 10 million, and COE is a total of 513 million on buildings and other construction is 70 million, 70.7 .7 million, which gives us a total of 1.327 billion. Next slide. The next slide is also indicating the same information, but per service and division, where uh, how much they have spent so far is, uh, is to accommodate the COVID requirements. Thank you. Sanjan, are you done? Uh, yes. Yes, I am done. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so much, uh, colleagues. Uh, the matter is, uh, the item is on the table for discussion. Miss um, uh, Chibiliga, uh, <clears throat> we 
the first time we receive a, a, a presentation on the 4.5 billion rand, uh, what it was said to achieve uh, was sometime in May, I think it was on the 22nd of, of May, and um, there's quite a number of things that were mentioned uh, as to things that were to be achieved as uh, the DOD's contribution to the fight uh, uh, against uh, against uh, COVID-19. Um, what comes up in mind uh, as I'm talking is field hospitals, uh, upgrading of uh, you know uh, military-based uh, 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 you know uh, clinic clinics. Uh, military of uh, our health uh, uh, facilities, uh, your hospital, and uh, you know uh, acquisition of uh, ventilators and, and all that, and uh, PPEs and, and so on and so forth. But uh, <clears throat> if I look at uh, your presentation of uh, this budget, the 4.5 billion rand by classification. 1.6 million 1.6 billion rand is allocated to main equipment. I don't know what that means, but only 10.4 million rand of that has been spent uh, so far. All right, but you 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 did indicate that there are orders that uh, uh, have uh, not been factored into uh, this amount. Uh, and then if you look at PPEs, is one point uh, that I think is program, is, is item number eight, PPEs is 1.2 billion rand. And 521 million rand of, of that have already been spent. Um, so that takes you into 1.3 billion rand spent against the 4.5 billion rand, all right? with the commitments, um, you call them orders, of one billion rand that are yet to be, uh, uh, what you call, factored into, on, onto the equation, oh, onto the equation, right? <laughs> See, I'm, I'm asking this question uh, because um, I'm worried that I, I don't see all these things that you spoke about when you first uh, did your presentation on what this 4.5 4 billion rand is, 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 is going to achieve. I'm worried that we'll wake up with a message that the money has been exhausted and um, <clears throat> uh, when there's nothing of the things, major things that we promised uh, delivered. I'm, I'm worried. It is in that context that we asked you to produce a business plan. Because this is a business plan with clear objectives and uh, outputs, uh, performance uh, indicators, and targets, so that um, and the budget against against uh, each one of them, so that we are then able to monitor progress on the expenditure and whether you are actually achieving on the things that you uh, uh, set out to achieve. So in the absence of that, we are discussing your budget in the, in the, uh, what you call, in what? Um, in the space. That's that's my worry. Uh, okay. I've made my opening remarks, which is a major concern. Colleagues, uh, may I uh, recognize your hands? Yes, Chair. Kubis Mare. Uh, is Mr. Mare and uh, is that uh, Mutle? Yes. Uh, was it Mutle? Oh, yes, uh, Tabo Mutle. Um, uh, uh, who else, colleagues, so that I recognize all the hands before I ask the DOT to respond? Uh, I only have recognized two colleagues, uh, Mr. Mare, Mr. Mutle. Uh, any other? Thank you very much, Chair. Any much other? appreciated. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. I've, I want to start off by, by, by echoing what you have said and, and the concerns that you have raised. I, I certainly share that. 
If I go back to right in the beginning in terms of the presentation, uh, I just wanted to get clarity for myself. In March, the president uh, approved the deployment of soldiers, and, and that was um, that was 4.5 billion rand, uh, and that was at an average of about 61,000 rand per soldier uh, deployed at that stage. Now, whether this 4.5 billion rand refers to that 4.5 billion rand, I don't know. Because last week we have received a second uh, confirmation of deployment from the president of another 1.5 billion rand. So that 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 brings already uh, six six billion rand that the president has has confirmed. Um, but here we only see 4.5 billion rand. Also, in terms of the, the the budget submitted by the minister of finance, I might be I, I stand to be corrected. But according to that, uh, of the 4.5 billion rand, um, only 2.88 billion rand, if I am correct, um, was 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 coming additionally to to the department. Now you you might say there's not a much difference between 3.88 and three, but that's about 1.1 billion rand, which is which is a large sum of money. So we need to get clarity on that and exactly where we stand. And also, why the why there why there was such an increase in cost per per uh, employed soldier from sixty one thousand to seventy five thousand rand of the one point five billion rand that is that is kind of a huge huge concern uh, uh, to me. Um, if if you if you then go further, so uh, part of the presentation that we have now seen, it seems like there's about uh, of. Uh, Cost for the Cubans, for the Cuban doctors, we uh, in terms of of uh, articles that are that we have written and uh, parliamentary questions that I've seen, I was under the impression those costs were carried by the Department of Health. Now we see there's flights for the Cubans of eight million rand and accommodation of twenty two million rand that the Department um, of Defence seems to be carrying. Um, so is that a double dipping? Is, will there be an, an, an invoicing out to the Department of Health that will be refunded to the Department of, of, of Defense? And, and why um, is it that, that, that the Department of, of uh, Defense must now carry those costs? There, there's also a, a number of other things that we have seen. Um, so we, we must make sure what is the actual shortfall that we are talking about. Um, is it is it uh, six billion rand in terms of cost of employees as well, or or what is the actual bottom line that we are talking about? Because if it's six billion rand shortfall, uh, then we know that we are in huge trouble uh, towards the end of the financial year. Then then also in terms of of that one uh, towards the end, there was a presentation of the costs, and what we have seen that on on the cost of of joint operations. It seems like there was a financial authority of 10 million rand, orders of 5.7 million rand, but there was already 132 million rand spent. Now that seems to be excessive uh, in terms of overspent already at this stage. So given that COVID will still proceed well beyond September, that the current deployment and the 1.5 extra 1.5 billion rand is, 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 is referring to, um, you know, we need to get more information on on how how it came about that such a big amount has been spent uh, against uh, and who approved that and whether that will be seen as as unauthorized expenditure. Um, also, I want to know that uh, the cargo flights from China, what what was those cargo flights and simultaneously on the quarantine costs of 14 million rand. Uh, I was under the impression the Department of Public Works is responsible for quarantine facilities. Or is that quarantine facilities for South African soldiers uh, that is, that is uh, you know, being infected by the COVID-19? So, so, so we need to get, um, again, that, uh, that. And also then all aircraft charter. There's about 28.9 million rand that is for aircraft charter. 
again, if it is the 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 um, uh, uh, you know repatriation of South Africans, obviously we need to to know whether those money will come back. Then then sir, uh, uh, another yeah. another point, and that's one one point that I've got. Where it's actually a, a pity that the minister, the deputy minister, or the secretary is not is not um, present. Currently, we know, and I know that you will not allow further discussion, and it's, there's no point in further discussing it in this meeting. But as we stand, we know that that we have got soldiers in Mozambique, and we know that that will be cost. So whether those um, uh, maritime reaction squadron and the special forces. Uh, whether they are, are funded in this budget, uh, because we have we have not seen anything, any approval from the president and cost involved in that. Uh, I suppose that will be done in a, in a closed session, but that is commitments that we have currently got, and we know about the ISIS threat. So so we need to know exactly where we stand in terms of of the financial commitments. So so uh, if I can get feedback on that. And then lastly, you know, it is it is again uh, a very concerning that neither the minister, deputy minister, SECDEF, chief of the SNDF or the CFO is present. Um, and and uh, it's, uh, my, my view is it seems like they are not serious about this and we're just going through the motions to get the report to, to parliament. Um, uh, and I want to really express my huge disappointment and, and frustration about this. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mare. Mr. Mutle? Uh, th thanks, Chair. Uh, I will uh, develop on your, your, your assertion. And I think uh, Honorable uh, Mare has uh, covered me on some of the questions or points that I wanted to raise. But uh, I'll just ask a precise, simple question uh, to DOD. Uh, because uh, clearly they have already spent uh, more than a billion of what has been allocated at this point. Uh, and probably they'll clarify by answering the, the questions that we have raised as to on what uh, has that money been spent on uh, in relation to the presentation that they have made. But my, my simple question is, uh, I just need them to confirm, are they implementing the COVID-19 uh, uh, 4.5 in line with the uh, cabinet decision? I just want uh, if they can say yes or no. I'm precisely asking this because uh, AMSCO should be playing a role uh, and it's not playing a role. And already they've indicated if a billion is gone out of the three million, out of the three billion, uh, literally is two billion uh, that is left, and AMSCO has not played any role uh, at this point in terms of us, in terms of how the decisions were taken from cabinet and implementation thereof. I think that 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 I think that that's a simple question, Chair, and I will pause there. Uh, thank, thank you so much. Um, over to you, uh, Ms. Chibilega. Um, you may then deal with the response to to the questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will ask the the log division and the SAMS environment to assist us with the details of what is currently in the process. But the questions that I can answer is um, the flights to to the, the repatriation flight. I think it's a question that was asked towards the end by uh, the honorable member. The repatriation flight from China uh, when at the very beginning, when um, uh, COVID was uh, at the starting, that amount has been claimed from the Department of um, Health, sorry, from the from DERCO. But I must also mention that the four and a half billion was estimated cost at that time. Some of the items that are included in the 
um, have fallen off, but some new ones have been added as well. But that presentation is still in the process of being approved or being approved by the, the PDSC internally at DOD. The, the cargo flights from China that was relating to the PPE that was supposed to be purchased by uh, DOD directly from China via AMSCO. And I think Log also will be able to assist us with those questions. Um, I think for now, all the questions basically are, need to be answered by Log and uh, Sam's also joint operations. One other one that I need to, to answer is um, the, the slide where uh, joint operations uh, expenditure is more than what was presented, that what was, uh, what is ordered. The reason for this is because um, the deployment costs, these are the deployment costs that are added to, to joint operations instead of HR, because joint operations does the deployment, hence that 132 million that is there. So it's not an unauthorized expenditure, it's just a, a, a joint operations deployment that's in there. Over to Dr. Gamede to direct who must answer. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Uh, Steve Dog, I think you should expand on uh, what the money was used for and how far are we with the uh, uh, process of acquiring um, items. Steve Dog? Thank you, uh, Dr. Kamehameha. Uh, let me start by firstly apologizing, uh, uh, Honorable Chef Hassan, um, General Muli, Chief of Logistics. Uh, I was supposed to have uh, participated in the in the in the earlier meeting of the Cattle Control Board, but because of the technology, we were muted. I only had the last portion of the, the presentation by my colleagues from the Cattle Control Board. Coming back to the uh, to the questions that relate to to law, uh, I'll say here I'm sitting with uh, two of my uh, my colleagues, Major General uh, Harrison, who's my deputy. Then on my right hand side, I'm sitting with. Uh, uh, Brigadier General Momu, who's my uh, listing uh, 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 director procurement. I'll then redirect the the, 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 thing, the questions because we have uh, already prepared the, 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 the were part of the presentation that was presented by Ms. Shibidika uh, General Arison. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, with regards to the intention within the budget of 4.5 billion. Uh, our intention was to provide uh, an equipping of the isolation, eye, eye care, as well as ICU capabilities at one military hospital, as well as at a two military hospital, and three military hospital, as well as a total of 23 sick bays. Within this environment, provision will be made for 1,361 isolation beds, 312 high care beds, and 173 ICU beds. Also, with, with regards to these isolation clinics, the intention was, or the requirement was then, also with the members that is placed in these isolation clinics, that the necessary rations will have to be provided. Then also other critical aspects that we, uh, we intended to procure out of the 4.5 billion that was originally allocated was then also the procurement of critical disinfectant sprayers that we can decentralize to the different units so that we don't have to outsource the capability. Then as well is the um, financial support to the Cuban medical staff accommodation as well as the the transport cost as well as the contract uh, capabilities. And then what is also very critical is that the various 
services in the Defence Force has identified quarantine areas. Now, these quarantine areas need the necessary support, and we are going to be making use of our Defence Works formation to provide the capability to support these quarantine and isolation clinics. So, if I can also then mention that um, with regards to the log environment and log division, we have already committed by means of FAs of over a billion with regards to combination of PPEs as well as other equipment that was procured in support of COVID-19. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, 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 Mr. General, uh, this thing, Harrison. Yeah, I, I really need to also to clarify over the issues of the the transportation costs of the PPEs from uh, the things from China. Those PPEs which we are still going to procure from China is the law uh, this thing division. We are in the process of uh, this thing of doing that. The previous flights that we we undertook as the as the thing as the law division. It was the donations which was, were made to our government by the government of uh, the system of China. Those plants are were specific for those TPEs, the donations. We are still going to undertake our trip to China to go and collect our own uh, uh, this thing, PPEs. That's the process which we are busy with now. Thank you, Chef. Are you, are you done? Yeah, we are done for now, uh, Chef. I, I, uh, uh, Chair, Chair, I, I, hope, I hope they are not done because they haven't answered all the questions. I thought so too. I thought so too. There is, can you switch off your mic? Uh, please? Can you switch off your mask, mic, please? Um, you see, colleagues, you can see the situation is, the presentation is not satisfactory. Let me tell you why it's not satisfactory. It's because you are spending money uh, when there is no plan. There is a plan, but we have not seen the plan. I'm not too sure if you have a plan that you are all, uh, uh, you know, speaking uh, to. I don't know. I mean, if there was a plan, I understand the situation we, we find ourselves in. Uh, the plan will have shifting targets, you know, because um, you you we, we are all fighting this moving target. We understand that. But now... You are talking, but um, we really don't know what we are achieving. It's true there were intentions, but we don't know to what extent have those intentions or those intentions are going to be realized to make good on them. It's not clear. And uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Dr. Kamete, can you answer the rest of the questions, um, those that have not been answered? Uh, I know maybe you may even ask uh, your colleagues to assist. Uh, I'll take cue from you. Thank you, Chair. What I want to say before I give to General Ramanswani, who is in charge of all the, 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 the personal plans, um, is that in my opening, I did indicate that we have already included um, uh, COVID-19 um, activities in our plans that we are taking. Obviously, uh, the detailed activities will be in the operational plans that are within uh, the department. Um, but I'll allow uh, General Ramanswani, who is responsible for the plan, to expand on the plan and what has been done and is to be done. General Ramanswani? Um, Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, let me start off, Chairperson, by saying the following. I, uh, and I got your concerns loud and clear. 
the to start off the person the the DOD do have a plan and that plan what happened is right from the beginning of covid 19 the plan we developed it and when we developed it as the DOD we then shared the plan with national Treasury. and the national treasury do have a plan against which our budget has been allocated so what we have in our own document as the main plan, that is what National Treasury have. So if we were to go to National Treasury today and say, produce the DOD plan, we'll give you the plan that we have, which talks to 4.5 billion. Now, having said that, Chairperson, I, I, I also want to add in the question that has been asked by Honorable Mare. Honorable Mare says, what is the bottom line that we're dealing with? Chairperson, and, and all what Honorable Mare have said in terms of the bottom line, I agree. The bottom line that we are dealing with, which is what we are trying to present to members of the Portfolio Committee now, right now, we are dealing with the bottom line of the letter of allocation. And what is that letter of allocation? That letter of allocation is the one that I've said to defense. We know you have asked 4.5 billion, and that 4.5 billion was there right from the beginning when we started with planning, which was also, as we know, in the employment papers. But the bottom line we're dealing with right now is the three billion, which is the letter of allocation. And why the letter of allocation? Because our now what we have to do now has got to talk to the three billion. So therefore, that is the bottom line. Yeah, if I have to move over to the 1.5 billion, which of course has recently been been, been uh, also part of the employment papers of the of the SNBF. Chairperson, we this and, and you've made the right point, Chairperson, which I fully agree with you. You have indicated that the, the, this this the the, the 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 situation that the country find itself in now, it's it's a moving target. It's shifting left, right, center. None of us can say what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. But with the passage of time. There is quite a lot of things that are coming up in order to support the people of South Africa. And that is what necessitated, by the way, the additional 1.5 billion. And we do not know, Chairperson, how far is this going to be taken through. But if we talk the bottom line right now, as we speak now, we do have a shortfall, as you would know, uh, because we had as 4.5, we got 3 billion. So therefore, 1.5 is a shortfall. Besides, we, no, because of the no, shift no, 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 you asked for 4.5 billion rand. And uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, sorry, I, I didn't get you, Chairperson. Yes, I'm saying you, you seem to be suggesting that uh, all what you have for COVID 19 is a 3 billion rand. But uh, as per the adjustment uh, estimates, uh, sort of adjustment appropriation, you have 4.5 billion rand, right? Because uh, 1. Uh, billion rand, 1.2 billion rand of the uh, 4.5 billion rand was going to be realized through the savings uh, in the department. In other words, you're going to shift 1.2 billion rand uh, that you would have effected from the savings to combine with the with the with the three billion rand that you got from treasury to make up the amount that um, you 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 the four point uh, something four point five billion rand whatever it is, so I'm, I'm trying to understand what is the situation. Uh, in, in in what are we talking about here? Chairperson, if if I, I I do get your point, I think you are referring to the reprioritization that was made yeah. within. The idea of reprioritization was uh, all that so that you can save money from other things and then shift it to the to to, to COVID nineteen um, related activities. Well, is that is that not the case? Yes, Chairperson, that is the case. What we what the the, one, the the money that has been reprioritized in the department. Thank God, the National Treasury did not touch on that one. And we were also praying for that because of the fact that there are additional in terms of press, in terms of making sure the aircraft can fly, in terms of getting some of the 
some of our uh, maritime uh, uh, um, capabilities to be going, we wanted to put that money in those particular areas. This, by the way, includes uh, that, that one point, uh, that money which we reprioritize. Some of the landward capabilities, which at this point in time are being utilized. So that is why we have taken it and we have said this money that we've reprioritized, we, we can put it and therefore then it, to, to make sure that all those capabilities, we can get them running once again using that, that particular funding. So therefore, Chairperson, as I, as I say, uh, the, the, the bottom line, now that is why we're talking the bottom line as a three, three billion, but you're quite correct, Chairperson, with the money that we have reprioritized. Okay. And, and that, that provides the clarity. I just want to say, Chairperson, what we have done in the slide, when we say that there is no visibility in terms of what we indicated earlier on in terms of what we are going to do. If we look at the first slide, second, third, the fourth one, the fourth slide, Chairperson, what we did there, we gave an abridged version in terms of what the DOD would require, what the full spreadsheet of the DOD, which, by the way, we have also sent it to National Treasury. So if that slide is short of information, we will accept that because behind that one slide, there is a lot of lines that are running across. And therefore, then, that is why then, Chairperson, I'm saying that we, we gave that one slide. And if, Chairperson, we, 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 we can, if members, honorable members say, no, we want to see behind that one slide, what is it that is there? We are then able to go and say to honorable members that, okay, behind the one slide, this is what was there. So, Chairperson, this is in short where we stand with this. And we are saying the 1.5 that is now uh, in the employment papers, we are hoping that most probably during the adjustment budget, uh, National Treasury is going to look at that and they are going to be assisting us on that. Uh, and, and that's about it, Chairperson. Uh, if there is any follow-up, please, I am ready to respond on any follow-up question again. And, and if that slide is of information, Chairperson, our apologies. Okay. Colleagues, uh, any other question? Yeah, question. Can I can I just um, um, inquire from from uh, the people involved? Because on that first slide it says that our cost of employment is 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 a major problem. So in terms of the cost of employment, we already it's purely on that there, there's a, there's a three billion rand shortfall. Um, so that is over and above all the other costs that they must now spend. Because what we actually require is the original 4.5 billion rand that was approved by the president in March. And, and remember, the, 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 the budget by the Minister of Finance is for the year, whilst the 4.5 billion rand was for the three months, and the 1.5 billion rand now is also only for three months. And, and we, we, we know, and, and, and all the indications is that this uh, three months will be extended further. So how and where do we see a reconciliation of that? Because it seems like there are some of that money that, that is now said have not been spent or have been reprioritized or, or maybe have been rolled over. We don't know that. And obviously to get the full picture we must get then a reconciliation of that to see how much was in fact spent and how much is available. Because, you know, just just by, by announcing, announcing and, and, and talking about that, it, it doesn't give us the answers that we require. Just with regards to the, the, the money that, that I have re, uh, request, uh, uh, questioned to logistics about the, uh, the Cuban doctors, Will, will that be refunded by the Department of Health? Um, because we, we see it here, but, but we need to know who will be funding it. Because as I've said, in terms of articles plus parliamentary questions, I got the impression that the Department of Health is, is standing in for that cost. And then, and then also with regards to the joint operations, if, if 132 billion, million rand has now been spent versus, nine, versus 10 million rand, where else will that money be coming from 
if if J Ops is now spending that money, uh, it must obviously come from some uh, of the budgetary items. So so they must at least tell us which which one will be debited if this one is credited with that additional money, please. Thank you. Okay. No thanks, um, uh, Mr. Mare. Uh, the 1.5 billion rand uh, is not part of the budget uh, that we are talking about currently. I mean, it came much later. It was after uh, the Minister of Finance tabled the budget. Uh, the, the budget that the Minister tabled took into account the 4.5 billion rand uh, that was supposed to be extra. But however, uh, the department had to surrender some money uh, which then resulted to a net of about 3 billion rand that they're talking about, right? And uh, I thought that was my understanding. Uh, so it means that we are not, as we're not, we have not st even started discussing about the 1.5 billion rand that relates to the extension of the deployment from the 26th of June to, I think, 26th of um, uh, September or so. So, um, uh, is, is, that, is that correct, uh, General Mboli? But it's part of the bottom line. It's part of the bottom line. No, no, no. The one for the point of uh, Who's going? Colleagues? Who, who has got the figures? Uh, Dr. Gamede? The 1.5 billion rand is not part of this. Is that correct? Yes or no? No, Chair, it's not yet part of this because this was, as you correctly indicated, um, is the money that was requested a long time ago. And, and 3 billion again was announced and allocated even uh, before the 1.5 billion. That's why uh, General Ramanswani says we are hoping that we, during the adjustment budget, in September, the Treasurer will try and give us something. Correct. No, thank you so much. Then the other question that uh, Mr. Mare uh, posed is in relation to uh, the cost uh, related to the Cuban doctors. Uh, I thought um, we were also in that space. I mean, our SAMS, uh, South African Health. Uh, uh, what do you call this? South African military health uh, uh, section was also in that space. I'm sure is the cost that uh, would be borne by them, isn't it? Chair, okay, I wouldn't. I would ask uh, um, the chief director of budget um, whether that money was recovered from. <laughs> Yeah, raise the uh, probably in the microphone. Who's online? Uh, hello? Was Chief Director who that you are asking to? Uh, uh, Ms. Chibilika, Chief Director Budget. Uh, Ms. Chibilika. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. The amount for the Cuban doctors, I'm not aware that it's supposed to be claimed from somewhere else, but logistics can assist us with that. But it was part of the four and a half billion that were, we submitted to National Treasury. Um, there has not been any claim except for the repatriation costs at the beginning for the China, um, for the China repatriation. I, I thought so too, uh, that this cost will be part of the 4.5 billion rand. Uh, Mr. Marais, do you still want to come in? All right. Colleagues, um, that... No, sir, sir I, I'll, I'll accept it for the moment, except as I've said, uh, you know, the, the, the parliamentary questions that I've seen was, was when, when the Cuban doctors was, was, uh, arrived here, there was a lot of questions being posed. And at that stage, the impression that I got is that Department of Health is standing in for that cost and not the Department of Defense. Uh, but now it seems like the Department of Defense, or, or they might be double dipping or someone might not, might not have given the, 
the correct answers, but uh, I, I think we will have to find that out from the Department of Health to get okay. clarity in terms of who is okay. for the cost. Okay, that's fine. Let's leave it at that for now. Uh, I think the, with, with the explanation that we have just received. Colleagues, is there any, uh, any other question before we uh, move off this item? Yes, Chair. Yes, Mr. Mar uh, Mr. Mutli. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I don't think my my question has been answered. Uh, however, uh, General uh, Ramatwana has uh, indicated that they they have a plan, and I want to believe that plan should be in line with uh, a, a cabinet decision on how they should implement uh, that particular plan. Are they implementing it in line with the cabinet decision, yes or no? That's what I will want to find out from them. Secondly, the, 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 the recent allegation, maybe it will go to, to uh, General Mbuli, this one. There was an allegation that uh, 14 Sai, they don't have PPEs, they don't have uh, uh, all the necessary equipment uh, for them to deal with COVID-19. And that matter was raised with SECDEF. Uh, I just want to check if they are aware that uh, these PPEs that they are procuring are reaching all bases within the country, uh, and how effective is their their distribution to to bases? Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Have you been made aware of this? Yes. Who's that? Mr. Mafanya here. Yeah? Mr. Mafanya, yes, uh, over to you, Just sir. a follow-up on COVID matter here. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah, in the previous uh, submissions done by SAMCO, there was a stage where they, they said they were uh, to produce ventilators, PPEs, uh, as well as sanitizers. Now, today we hear that uh, the DOD, through SAMCO, uh, AMSCO, where to purchase the PPEs and, 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 and ventilators from China. Now, I, I need some clarity there, where we need to know as well the DOD had to purchase through um, AMSCO uh, the PPEs from China or where they to develop them here at home. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. M maybe, uh, Chair, Chair, yes, uh, Mr. Ma Ma Mafanya just, come, uh, Honorable Mafanya just reminded me of a question that I wanted to ask to to General Mbuli. What is the purpose of uh, procuring direct from China uh, whilst uh, we must uh, support uh, the industry within South Africa? Uh, to ensure that uh, we capacitate and we build capacity. If I can get uh, a clarity on that, what is the main uh, 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 intention of uh, ignoring uh, capabilities within the country going direct to China? And that uh, also uh, defies the transformation and the empowerment uh, uh, policies that we seek to implement. Okay. Um, Chairperson. Over to you. Yes, sir, Mr. Mark. Chairperson, just if I can, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just to just to follow up on what I've what I've raised, um, the the matter of the aircraft charters that has not been answered yet. Um, and then also with regards to the current quarantine cost, whether that will also be refunded from the part of the public works or whether that is DOD. In other words, our members quarantine facilities for our members only specifically. And then in terms of the 4.5 billion rand that the president has approved and similarly what will happen now with the 1.5 billion rand. Would it, would it be able to get a reconciliation from the department so that we know in terms of this three months uh, deployment authorization, how much of that 4.5 million billion rand was actually uh, spent? And obviously in terms of this current 1.5 billion rand, which will be part of the next quarter report, 
whether we can get a, a recon specifically on that 1.5 billion rand, because that, that makes a, a major impact on, no. the, on, on the rest of the year. Um, but so, so in other words, it's not part of the budget, but yes. it's just a question whether we can get a recon on that. No, please take it out of the question, Mr. Mare. Uh, we can only deal with the 1.5 uh, billion rand once it has been presented in parliament by the Minister of, of, of Finance. So far, we only know of the 4.5 billion rand. But obviously, there was money suspended, so it's no longer 4.5 billion rand, it's 3 billion rand. Well, so, I, 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 beg to, I beg to differ, sir, because the 1.5 billion rand has been approved by the president for no. now spending from June to September. Yes, it's been no, approved no. by the president. No, no, no. It will come through uh, the adjustment that will be made much later in the year. So it's not part of this adjustment. This adjustment was very quick to deal with what was known at the time. All right. What would be known from uh, the time when the minister made the appropriation adjustment and uh, to the time when he makes a new appropriation adjustment, that would be factored into that adjustment appropriation. In other words, um, that adjustment would be made uh, in about uh, uh, October, uh, November month, there about October, October month. So, so I'm saying whatever comes up now is whatever crisis would only be uh, captured in the next uh, uh, adjustment appropriation. This was specific to deal with uh, what was known at the time uh, of presenting the budget. Ms. Chibulega, you want to say something? And deal with uh, uh, other questions. Yes, right. um, thank you, Chair. I just want to clarify, we requested an estimate budget of four and a half billion. Then National Treasury went through our submission uh, trying to justify the four and a half billion and they came up with giving us a three billion allocation. The four and a half billion yes was announced by the president but it's not actually what we got. And like you say, Mr. Uh, uh, Chair, Honorable Chair, the 1.5 billion that was announced last week uh, or in the last few days is not part of this uh, discussion or presentation. We have not received any formal communication as a department to start working on it. We just have, uh, we just know about it as well. So that was it. And then Mr. Mute and Mr. Mafanya had uh, uh, questions. Uh, who's going to deal with the questions? Uh, uh, Dr. Cabela, who are you allocating these questions to? Chair, yeah, I must just deal with uh, one question, that is whether or not we are implementing um, this budget in line with cabinet. Yes, the, the, the allocation for COVID-19 will be used for COVID-19. And that's why, again, I repeat, we have adjusted our plan uh, to be in line with the three billion rand that we have been allocated. So we are going to spend it in line with cabinet. And, and then um, the questions, all the procurement questions say about what inside, not having PPEs and uh, the purchasing of ventilators from China. Um, and, 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 and why we decided to buy direct from China will then go to Silo. Silo? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Damete. Thank you, Honorable Chair, uh, Chair Person. If I, I, I'll deal with uh, this in the two questions, and uh, my, uh, my generals next to me will also assist in answering this, uh, this question. Let me start firstly with the 45 uh, this in question. Your Honor, we, we are weekly sending all the PPEs to the different ASB army support bases in the, in the, in the country. And there is a daily situational report that comes from all the services giving us the status of the PPEs in the environment. CJ Ops, which is directly responsible in deploying uh, uh, all these uh, elements, 
came to the ADC headquarters. Every week, we got meetings twice a week where we give the uh, CJO ops, give the status of the PPEs in each and every ADC uh, 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 environment. We haven't received any issue on 14 sides. If I have to add your honorable distinguished person, when I say every week there is an aircraft that leaves Waterloo to the different areas to go and drop the 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 PDE. Coming to the AI procurement in this thing in China. The owner of uh, the special person, uh, in the beginning of things when we were then told to get everything involved, we find ourselves in a situation where we were faced with the, uh, the thing, a crisis of giving our deployed members the, 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 thing, the PPE. The, the military command council then instructed CLOC because all the companies which were providing the PPE were waiting for their PPEs from China. Then the military command council said, CLOC, it's better that not with the, the bilaterals that we have with the state companies in China, the music companies that we have in this in the bilateral uh, the, the relations, talk to them if and see if they can provide us with the the thing the PPE. But we were faced with uh, this in, uh, a situation, Your Honor. I can now tell you, Your Honor, we have already spent about seven hundred and fifty million. No time in buying the, 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 the PPE. The only things that we are going to buy from China is the medical equipment like the ventilators, the test kits. Those are the things which we are in discussion with AMSCO to assist us to go and buy these ventilators and the test kits. It is in China. But the rest of the PPEs, the mask and all those things, we are buying them locally. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, no, no. Can you add? Uh, th thank you so much. Thank you so much for, 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 for. I think we have dealt with all the, the, the questions. Um, unless I'm wrong. Uh, all what remains for me now is to thank uh, you, Dr. Gamete, Brigadier uh, Ramazzoni, Brigadier, sorry, General Ramazzoni, and uh, General Mbuli, and, uh, and, and the team, uh, DOD, for the, the presentation. Um, uh, today, um, we are fully aware of the financial constraints that you have to uh, deal with. Um, firstly, you had uh, a budget um, a shortfall of about uh, three billion rand um, uh, on your against your compensation of employees. And uh, that uh, shortfall uh, remains uh, a shortfall if, even now, um, despite the, 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 the 700 million rand that was uh, allocated uh, to you. It, it's, it's, it doesn't go anywhere nearer to addressing um, all your COC um, funding requirements. So we are aware of that. And uh, we are also aware of uh, the fact that um, you now have to, um, you no longer have um, 
uh, that you are facing a decline in your special defense accounts uh, and that you no longer be able to uh, meet all the uh, the requirements uh, so far as it relates to your uh, the material uh, to your equipment um, or your obligations with the uh, AMSCO and AMSCO with other people. Um, so we are aware of all that. So we will navigate through this together. And uh, it's a painful situation, but we have to live with it, uh, understanding the situation in our economy. Our economy was not doing well uh, before lo uh, lockdown. Uh, hence, some departments had to take a, a cut. Then came lockdown, which made uh, the situation even worse. And the uh, federal cuts had to to be effected on almost all votes. Uh, so not the only vote that is affected. So I'm sure what's happening here is happening throughout the the, the, the continent and uh, in, the, in the world. We really uh, 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 sympathize with you. So we wish you well as you uh, undertake your, your work wherever you are. And uh, we really thank the good work that uh, you are doing, our soldiers are doing, let alone the negativity, but you are doing a good work. And we see our soldiers on, on the front line, uh, be it in the engineering service, be it in the health service, and uh, be it in the uh, you know, maintenance of uh, uh, law and order uh, out there. We are really grateful and um, we really appreciate the good work that they are doing. And um, right just recently we received a message that uh, Eastern Cape uh, called on the soldiers to be deployed, uh, especially the health section, uh, SAMS, to be deployed with immediate effect to come and assist there to rescue the health uh, uh, system uh, that site. And we are really appreciative of, of that. With that, I really thank you. Uh, your budget will be approved. Uh, but of course, we still have to come back to us to discuss the, 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 the business plan in relation to the 4.5, which is now 3 billion rand. We are aware it's no longer 4.5, it's 3 billion rand. And um, we're not too happy with the way we have presented it uh, so far. There are things that were mentioned, but please come back to tell us that we are no longer going to do this. We are no longer going to do this. This is what we are going to do. Because what you are presenting uh, to us right now is a situation where you are fixing the aircraft uh, in the air, you know, as it is leaving, as it is flying. So we are aware, but I'm sure you can still produce something uh, that uh, if you are going to maintain hospital, you simply say, these are the hospital. With this budget, We'll, this is so much we we'll spend on the hospitals. Yeah, in the sick base, with this budget, this is so much we are going to uh, spend on the sick base. If you have quarantine site developed, uh, this is the budget for all quarantine um, uh, facilities. But of course, you'll only come back to us when at least there's firmness in relation to all those uh, activities. Right now, it's still very so soft. We are aware of it. And they are chasing a, a moving target, like we said. But I'm sure there will come a time where everything starts to uh, be very firm, and 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 because only then your plan would be uh, you know solid. All right, with that we we can excuse you, and uh, so you are free to leave at any time when you want to leave, and you will then quickly move off this item uh, to deal with them um, at DMV. Dr. Kamet, you want to make a closing remarks uh, before I release you? Okay, thank you very much and uh, thank you for your kind words and understanding. I will take your concern um, that you indicated at the beginning about the attendance of the second uh, to him. Um, but I would just like to um, uh, uh, say to members that the second is actually at the center of coordinating um, the fight against COVID-19. As uh, chair of the JCPS cluster, he's also chairing the net joint. So his hands are really full. It's not because he didn't want to come here, but he had to go because he's the center that is holding other regions together when it comes to this uh, chair. Thank you.
Yes, no, no, no. Thank you uh, so much, uh, colleagues. DLB, um, uh, 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 I now release the team. Uh, DOD, thank you very much. Uh, DMV, uh, I saw General um, Gwebi uh, uh, on, on, on the screen. Uh, DMV, Th th DMV thanks, you were, uh, your cut is 137 million. Uh, I'm sure it will be very quick. 10 minutes presentation. Uh, th th thanks, uh, we'll try our level best. Uh, the Mr. Ndlovu is with us, with the CFO of the department. As Chair, you've just indicated that uh, the allocation for 2021 financial year was 683 million. Now, the revised allocation is 546, informed by the uh, adjustment of 137. So I would request therefore the CFO just to go to the critical slides. Where have we managed to get this money? of 137 per program and also to indicate how much per program and which areas are affected and the implication uh, with regards to us losing that amount of money. Uh, Mr. Ndrov, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, General. It, look, it sounds very swift and uh, sh uh, short. Uh, th thank you so much, uh, DG. Uh, good day, uh, Chair. Uh, and honorable members uh, of the committee. Uh, we will be quick, Chair. Uh, basically, what we have done in terms of the presentation as it flows, we've just provided historical uh, spend pattern for the department since it became uh, independent of the Department of Defense. But however, for the sake of, of uh, presenting to the uh, portfolio committee on the impact of the cut We'd like to just to start from slide number 10, uh, where we just confirm uh, with the committee that yes, we have received an allocation letter, uh, which confirms that 137 million has been uh, reduced from our original allocation of 683 million. And uh, moving directly to slide number 13, Chair, which is merely then confirming the impact uh, of the cuts effectively, uh, we're looking at a 25% uh, a cut uh, when we exclude the allocation for cost of employment budget. Uh, we did so because uh, cost of employment is mutually and exclusively allocated purely for the uh, payment of uh, salaries and wages. Uh, just to confirm again, as per the economic classification on the same slide, that COE and capital expenditure was not reduced. It was only goods and services uh, that was reduced by 47 million, and then transfers and subsidies reduced by 90 million. Of the 47 million, the allocation by branch is confirmed on slide number 14, Chair and uh, members of the committee, where administration was reduced by 15 million, uh, a social economic support uh, branch reduced by 90 million, and empowerment and stakeholder management reduced uh, by uh, 32 million. Uh, just to also indicate, uh, Chair and members, that the 90 million was a direct reduction on the benefits, uh, mainly on education support by 60 million. And then you, you've got other social benefits, uh, which was reduced by uh, 20 million, and healthcare support uh, reduced by 10 million. So the total reduction, as confirmed, is 137 million. Uh, the, the risk were then uh, identified by the department uh, by branch. But mainly, if we look at slide number 18, Chair, where we talk directly to the impact on benefits, uh, the reduction on, on healthcare support within the social economic support of 10 million does not necessarily reduce 
the key performance indicator, uh, which is then provision of healthcare support to military veterans. And um, all that it will do, it will render uh, the department being unable to then pay the medical bills, which are then uh, done through the Department of Defense, uh, through their um, uh, military health facilities uh, uh, as provided. Uh, the second impact is on education. Uh, we don't see a direct impact on the uh, performance indicator. It's merely, again, a direct reduction on the budget, which may then mean a delay uh, in terms of the department being able to pay uh, the institutions uh, that provides uh, the, the education support to military veterans and their uh, uh, beneficiaries. However, as a mitigation there, we still have to engage uh, further uh, with military veterans to utilize the free education system, which is provided through NSFAS. Also, there is a need for the department then to engage uh, with provincial departments of education, both uh, uh, mainly the basic, as well as then uh, the higher education as well, so that we obtain relief thereof. And then the last area, uh, mainly affected was the provision of housing, which was reduced by 10 million. The target there was uh, 710 units to be provided in the financial year. Uh, we, we are proposing, uh, based on the calculation done, to reduce that by uh, to, to 500 at this stage, Chair. Um, maybe then quickly, just touching on uh, empowerment and stakeholder management, the, the key indicator there that was affected was the provision of heritage sites. We had planned to provide three uh, due to our dependency on construction as well as uh, interaction uh, through uh, the Department of Arts and Culture. We then are proposing to remove that indicator completely. However, the funds that were earmarked for these projects uh, which was a 5 million rand, will be redirected towards a uh, burial support. Uh, the rest of the other reduction, mainly on goods and services, was admin related, except that on empowerment and stakeholder management, uh, we were also uh, requested to fund the three conferences, uh, which is the MK, the SANVA, as well as the SACC. So those funds have since been removed at this stage uh, so that then we can be able to absorb the budget re reduction. So all in all, Chair, we do uh, appreciate the situation that the country is facing, uh, which is the pandemic. And, and in response to that, then these are the areas that we have then reduced in terms of the budget allocation. However, internally, uh, the accounting officer will direct us further in terms of how then do we uh, solidify our plans so that then we are not found wanting in terms of the spend as well as uh, the key delivery against our APP. That will be it uh, from my side, Chair. I would like to just hand over to the accounting officer to wrap up. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, General Mkwebi. Any Further comments? Except to say, Chair, we are required now to revisit our annual performance plan uh, with these kind of cuts, including our strategic uh, plan uh, in terms of the next five year period. And we have re received those guidelines from the Department of Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation. So we are in that process as we speak. And of course, we are requesting that the your good selves take note of what's happening and the impact of that as far as the special adjustment budget and if there's any guidance or direction who would at least uh, be willing to take that on board all right thanks. no thank thanks, you so much. Thank, thank you so much uh, general uh, i'm sure by the time we meet uh, to deal with the first quarter performance report uh, your plan would have been revised uh, your annual uh, annual performance plan plan would have been revised, isn't it? 
Yes, yes, Chair. Thank you so much. So we'll leave that uh, at that for now. All right, uh, colleagues, may the, the, the matter is on the table. Um, uh, was, can I check if we do have uh, comments from the committee members? Comments? Uh, comments? Uh, it doesn't look like there is any comment. Uh, Hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, yes, Bob uh, Okay, let me let me note you, Bob Shalembe. Malia K. Shalembe. Thank you. Thank you so much. And any other colleagues before I. Uh, any other co comment? All right, there's only one comment on, on this vote, uh, vote 26, uh, present day. Uh, 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 General, over to you, sir. Uh, you may then deal with... Oh, sorry. Oh. <clears throat> Malia, okay? shall I be please? Uh, the platform is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, well, um, I know that there are a lot of things that are very, very challenging in the department uh, as far as uh, the budget is concerned. Well, I can see that, I mean, uh, the reduction or pruning of the budget, uh, right, I mean, uh, with it's about 137 million something. But Chairperson, um, I just want, I want to know from the department, they say when it comes to the support to education, uh, they will engage, um, I think they, they want, I mean, to see if uh, NSPAS can accommodate, I mean, uh, those people who are being supported by the department uh, in education. Are there any arrangement uh, that has been initiated by the Department of Military Veterans with the Department of, of Higher Education to see whether the NSPAS will be able to make, I mean, uh, funds available so that, I mean, we don't see, I mean, uh, those who are benefiting from that uh, scheme, I mean, I mean, uh, ending up not getting assistance uh, from the department. Because now, well, I mean, uh, they've started their education and they, there is no need now to say uh, when they go uh, to school, they are being turned away to say they have not uh, paid this and that if they can clarify whether arrangement has been made with the Department of Higher Education in this regard. And then two, uh, I see now there is a reduction uh, of uh, 21 million from, I mean, uh, the budget of uh, the NK, South African National Military Veterans Association and South African Cape Corps. Now, well, uh, I missed something here how much was the initial budget for this elective conference? Because if they say they they have reduced the budget for this uh, elective conference by 21 million. So what was the initial budget? I'm trying to get the figure there to see if the reduction is 21 million. And also to know why do we have so much just for these elective conferences of the NK, Sanva and South African Cape Corp. Going forward, I mean, uh, Chairperson, I, I raised that question about the South African Cape Corps uh, because there's something what you call, as uh, they said, now there is uh, an association, I mean, uh, dealing with that. Who are these, I mean, uh, say South African Cape Corps? Because we have been arguing about this and no answer has been given whether they are official or not official. But here we are seeing the budget, that there is a budget for the elective conference of the South African Cape Corp. Who are these uh, these people now? Because we are still arguing uh, in that matter. And then also when it comes to the NK, uh, maybe if the NK is the one that I know, that uh, I don't know. Whether it's only the NK, what about uh, the other, uh, I mean, um, armies that were involved, uh, including the NK, where are they in this, I mean, uh, in this, I mean, presentation? Chairperson, I'm looking now to the issue of the housing. Uh, yes, I can see now, well, uh, there is a problem now to, I mean, to, to continue with the... Hmm? 
Did I lose you? Hello, colleagues, have I lost him? Yes, Chair, oh. we can't hear him. Oh, not anymore. I thought uh, the problem was my side. Hello. Yes, uh, uh, please, please uh, we lost you. I'm not sure where did you lose me, but I was busy with, I mean, uh, the budget, budget reduction of 21 yes. million. So you are still checking uh, the, 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 South, the SACC Military Veterans Association, asking why are we uh, still, why are we spending money on them when there is still a dispute? Uh, whether they are uh, recognized or not. I think the question was around that. Question was around that. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I think that question maybe was clear. And then, Chairperson, I was now on the issue of um, housing vandalism. Yes, there is a complaint that now they can't, they will be struggling to, to build houses for military veterans. But uh, if maybe they can help me now, whether that issue of illegal uh, occupation of houses for military veterans has been sorted out, so that, I mean, we don't go on, I mean, uh, building houses. At the end of the day, we don't find military veter veterans to occupy uh, those houses. Third person, I'm worried uh, also because now nothing is being said about uh, the military veterans appeals board, which was a big argument uh, in our pres last presentation by the board. That, I mean, there, is, there was no budget for them for the past, I mean, uh, five years. Now, I don't see anything uh, being uh, considered to see now what is the board going to do if, I mean, we are in that situation. Maybe if, they, if there's something that is being done to ensure that this uh, appeals board is assisted. I don't see anything in the budget. I don't see any. Please, uh, if they can uh, clarify on that. Thank you. Yes, uh, colleagues. So th those were the only questions. Uh, seeing that uh, you was the <laughs> member with Chair. the question. Oh, who is that? Mute. Oh, Mute, welcome, welcome, uh, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I missed the uh, the session where you were looking for. Oh, I see. I suspected so. All right, over to you, sir. Okay. No. Thanks, Chair. I just want to find out uh, from uh, the DMV uh, in terms of the impact that uh, this budget cut will have uh, mm -hmm. with regard to their footprint, uh, their new uh, provincial offices, uh, as that was uh, a positive indicator in terms of them reaching out uh, to military veteran and uh, 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 ensuring uh, effective uh, service delivery to military veteran. What what is their plan then going forward? Uh, how are they going to maneuver with that budget cut with regard to that uh, 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 move of ensuring effectiveness and accessibility of military veterans to their office? Secondly. Secondly, is with regard to to accessibility of uh, uh, healthcare of military veterans, uh, because uh, what what we have had also is in line mm. with uh, uh, what we have had from the DoD in terms of uh, what they've presented to say they are going to renovate and ensure that. Uh, uh, they have sick base in 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 several uh, uh, bases that are, will be functional. Mm -hmm. uh, to what an extent uh, has the DMV uh, been proactive in ensuring that uh, it can be able to deal with uh, members that need healthcare services across the country to access uh, with agency uh, these uh, healthcare services. Uh, given the fact that uh, they are cons they will be constrained in terms of the budget, but uh, their effectiveness is still uh, required to ensure that uh, 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 mm. military veterans do have access effectively and efficiently to these services as they are meant uh, for them. 
So yeah, I think uh, those are my two questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you are muted, Chair. Thank, th sorry, thank, thank you so much, uh, 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 Honorable Mutle. Over to you, General. Uh, you deal with some or all, uh, uh, depending on whether you want to allocate it to your colleagues. Uh, th th thanks, Chair. Uh, CFO, you would uh, take uh, the ones which speak to the uh, 21 uh, million in terms of the conferences. Uh, then you will also take the one which speaks to the appeals board and probably you might want also to bring on board the advisory council. Chair, the question in, re in relation to the Department of Higher Education and Training. Yes, we are in uh, touch with the Department of Higher Education and Training and NSFAS. We've got a service level agreement with NSFAS where they are at least, uh, they've given us on what basis are they able to support uh, students. Mainly for us, the challenge for our military veterans mainly is question of age, where they uh, fall out, and sometimes uh, is question of uh, income. So mainly that's where they fall out. But in the main, as we speak, we've got something like 200 uh, students being supported by NSFAS. Uh, so yes, we've got a good working relationship We've got at least uh, on a monthly basis, we do meet and check and verify what's happening. We have appointed uh, one individual who's based uh, in Western Cape, uh, working very closely with NSFAS to deal with the challenges of our students who are in public uh, uh, tertiary institutions. As for the South African uh, Cape Corps, uh, the Cape Corps <coughs> is part of the SADF which the SADF has got uh, what they call as an association, CMVO. But the Cape Corps, they then decided to get out of the CMVO environment, claiming all the history and their dissatisfaction. And then they approached the minister to be uh, recognized as an association. That recognition was done uh, by the minister uh, as an association. What was left of them, was to engage Sanva and be able at least uh, to be taken on board as part of uh, the new association. Sanva was expected to make a decision. And then we then also, like all other associations, therefore going forward, we start funding the activities, of course, through Sanva. So that would be the Cape, Col uh, the Cape Core. As for the MK, the MK is more on a unity conference where the MK is trying at least to unite uh, uh, themselves and make sure that they are ready to participate uh, in the conference of Sanva going forward. For the <coughs> other associations except MK, they did have their own conferences uh, in running their own affairs. They are more on the stable side and they are just waiting for the sun for the sunva to have a conference but mk must have the only conference before they can go to this uh, uh sunva conference the issue of illegal occupation of houses what we have done between uh, us and the department of human settlement both at national and provincial level we have taken a position which says in the allocation of sites before the actual building. We are now beginning to allocate sites to military veterans before they start uh, building, so that the military veteran at least can associate himself with that structure going up, so as to prevent any illegal occupation um, by any other person. So we bring them on board as early as possible. And to those areas where there have been uh, illegal occupation, what we are doing we are looking at regularizing that by making sure that the individuals, one, they are military veterans. If they are military veterans, they might not have been probably in the top list of those who were supposed to be uh, allocated houses. 
but they might have been sitting in those houses probably for a year or so. Therefore, in the light of that, we are saying we'll at least um, finally allocate those houses, but going forward, we'll try at least to uh, prevent any uh, illegal occupation by awarding sites to individuals before they are built. In terms of the provincial offices chair <coughs> by Honorable Muncher, presently we've got about six provincial offices. We were remaining with three. Uh, so obviously we won't be able to extend our reach in terms of those provincial offices, the, rem the remaining three. We are also going to struggle to a certain extent with the ones we've just managed to acquire uh, in terms of connectivity and uh, also in terms of furniture. So we're going to struggle uh, with this uh, uh, budget cut going forward. And when it comes to the issues of computers, uh, desktop, laptops, we're also going to struggle to at least uh, empower those uh, provincial officers to do what is expected of them. As for the healthcare, we are working with the South African Military Health Service with regards to availing their sick base right through the country where our military veterans can at least say go. Then depending on the seriousness of uh, the situation in terms of whatever challenge they might be having, then it is a sick base through their doctors who refer them to public hospitals or private hospitals, depending on the case, and sometimes taking them to their own hospitals, which is uh, one, two, and three meter hospitals. Yes. So, Chair, that was uh, my my response. I would ask the CFO, therefore, to just uh, respond on the 21 million in terms of uh, venues and facilities, uh, how much was uh, uh, budgeted, and also what is the impact of this as far as the appeals board and the advisory council. CFO. Uh, thank you, General. Uh, from 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 the budget perspective, Chair, uh, slide number eighteen, uh, seventeen, uh, because we've already identified a risk as a department in terms of funding to the three statutory bodies, uh, which is advisory council, appeals board as well as uh, SANVA. Because the current allocation to the department uh, does not uh, uh, clearly indicate how much the department must allocate uh, to the three bodies. So it is within the department then, the, then we, we, we will then make a determination based on the previous spend patterns by the three bodies that we then make an allocation. However, I must then emphasize, Chair, that as a department, we have seen a need to also sit down with the three bodies so that then they can also give us their activity plans uh, for each year uh, prior to us engaging the MTEF uh, process so that then we ensure that we agree on their activities and then going forward, ensure that those activities are properly funded. But however, on hindsight, we have undertaken to then engage National Treasury, uh, probably with the involvement of the other three bodies, so that then we ensure that Treasury recognizes that we also have to make funds available for the three bodies. Because at the moment, all what Treasury says, we allocate you uh, 683 million to your allocation internally to ensure that there is funding for these three bodies. So going forward then, we must agree upfront with Treasury that certain amount from the allocation letter will specifically speak to these three bodies so that then there is always mutual interest on all the parties involved. 
uh, with regards to the allocation for the conferences, I must, uh, I must stress, Chair, that we had planned to fund these conferences in the previous financial year. However, due to then uh, logistical uh, challenges, uh, the, it was both the Sanva elective conference as, as well as the MK unification uh, conference. Those did not materialize. Uh, then there was a need for then the department to, to roll forward these conferences into the current financial year. So these uh, conferences were not originally in the plan, but due to the reprioritization of the budget, we have then since uh, uh, foregone other activities so that we ensure that there is sufficient funding. Uh, to say what informed the 21 million, the 21 million was informed by previous spending on, on conferencing uh, and mainly uh, on the previous activities because we have funded uh, conferencing in, uh, in, in the past and also based on the number of delegates and uh, that were then uh, proposed by the the, 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 the the formations. Then we have uh, then allocate funds per individual uh, based on the number of heads uh, that were uh, proposed. But however, we, we see a need then to further engage with uh, the, 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 the organizations to say, given uh, the current state of affairs, can we make a certain uh, considerations in terms of the number of delegates, probably uh, the means of conferencing going forward, uh, so that then we we try and, and minimize the cost to the best uh, of our ability. So basically, that will be my response, Chair. I don't know whether it will be sufficient, but it is also important to add on the issue of engaging NSFAS. Just to add on what the DG has indicated, we have already engaged uh, NSFAS uh, in terms of them taking over. However, what happened is that only a few could qualify uh, in, in terms of the current uh, qualifying criteria of NSFAS. So then we want to take it a step further with NSFAS uh, to see if uh, the current uh, regulations uh, will then uh, uh, be uh, made in such a way that it 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 it, it has a certain uh, 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 consideration for military veterans specifically, uh, so that then we ensure that there is proper funding through the free education system of NSFAS. But presently, we've already engaged with NSFAS, but we need, we need to take the engagement to the next level so that we ensure that they absorb all of our, our, of our beneficiaries. And that will be it from, from my, my side, Che. Okay, thank you so much, colleagues. Uh, now the time is three minutes to 12 o'clock. Um, so 12 close. Uh, General, um, do you still want to uh, do a wrap up? Uh, you only have a minute to do so. Thanks, Chair. No, ours is just to thank uh, your good self to at least uh, give us an opportunity to explain to what the impact is and what we're facing. And of course, we take uh, into account the questions being raised. Uh, going forward, uh, we will also be ready when it comes to this. Let's got a report, Chair. Thanks very much. Well appreciated. Thank you so much. General, thank you so much uh, uh, to your team as well. Um, we, we we will meet with you uh, when we deal with your first quarter uh, performance, uh, budget performance report. Uh, please don't forget that we have uh, outstanding issues with you. Please take those issues into account so that when we meet, at least you would have cleared some of the, at least most of the issues of concern that we, we had with you. Um, we detailed them during the first, fourth quarter uh, budget performance report, and also during the time when we deal, dealt with dealing with your main budget. 
Uh, agreed, General? Agreed, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Colleagues, we've come close uh, to, to the end of the meeting. Uh, I wish to thank all of you, colleagues, uh, my members of the committee, and everyone who was at the meeting, uh, including the support team. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.